third one at like 10. I messed, I messed around with the Wi-Fi. I messed around with the Wi-Fi. It's back. It's back. I think it's back. Bookworm, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Are we here? I see you. Oh, God damn it. My headset. <laughs> Bookworm, can you hear us? Hello? I'm waiting on Bookworm's reply. Yep, they can hear us. They said yeah. Yes! Oh my god, OBS, fuck you. You're still better than Streamlabs, but fuck you. <sighs> Anyways, are are we ready? Also, Bookworm, if something happens again, please let me know. With OBS. Yes. Anyway, we ready? Something important just came up. I need to head off. Okay. Okay. Um, Will you be uh, okay? Just, just, just message me when, like, it comes to a point where I'm absolutely needed, and I'll come back. All right. Okay. It should be. We could ju should just compensate. It'll be good, man. Yeah. Uh, I'll. I'll. I. Uh, you okay? Thank you so much. Sorry. Just, just let me know when I'm needed. Okay. I'll come back. Yeah. Um, just let me know when I'm needed. All right. Oh, hope you're doing all right. Oh, they still here. We're, we're still here. How'd you get left? Uh, I was asking about them, but no. Oh, oh. Anyways. Momo, are you ready? One second. One moment, please. Momo is loading. <laughs> Program Momo active. <laughs> All right, then I'm good. Sorry. You're all right. Mm -hmm. Right. The creation of the Dr. Bright by the great Dr. Bright. Editor, Discord server, Chapter 1, of Agoraphobia. On a starless night at Site Redacted, Aaron Bright is awakened by the loud, incessant beeping of their alarm clock. Noticing it was 8 p.m., Aaron begrudgingly pulled herself up out of bed. She proceeded to get out of her boa pajamas and headed over to the clo her closet. She put on her purple t-shirt that had a pocket and black sweatpants on top of her snow white skin. Aaron then went to the standing mirror to fix her disheveled hair. She swept her short vi violet hair with crimson streaks in it to the left of her head revealing the shaven right side before leaving her room she grabs her level 4 key card and puts on her four screen flip flops this is going to be another shitty day it was 035 she said with a yawn as she stepped back stepped out of her cell left open for her as she embarked on the day's tasks oh hey bright a person from the wayside asked, with only exhaustion to back it up. The individual was one Dr. Indigo Rattler. They had warm brown skin, and his indigo blue eyes shone brightly, their wavy hair that trailed down their back like thin winding vines, 
to cause them to stand out a little more than the others, who was a stranger to no one. Rattler had a drink being held firmly by their arm that wasn't full of vials. It was a thick caramel ice cream shake. Streaks of dark caramel syrup littered throughout. Bits of banana, pineapple, and crown melon were mixed in while a large slather of hot fudge sat at the top, uh, sat on top uh, of on top of a pile of whipped cream and whipped cream cheese. Two tall churro sticks were shoved inside the cup with a sprinkling of cinnamon coating over the fudge. There were a plate of elotes covered in soft cheese that was begin being held on by mayo and melted enough to hold a good large number of flaming hot Cheetos crumbs. He handled the food and drink over to Aaron. Please sit down and eat something before work. I don't want you to skip a meal. Rattler spoke with tiredness and concern leaking through their voice. You know, Dr. Rattler, you're supposed to refer to me as Dr. Bright, right? Elsa, thank you for the food, but I'll be fine without it before work. She said, trying to give the food back to him. Don't skip a meal, Bright. Dr. Rattler uttered flatly, pushing the food back. Fine, I'll eat the food. I understand, I don't understand why you want me to eat before work anyway. Try to remember to call me Dr. Bright next time. She warned Dr. Rattler casually. Dr. Rattler was a level three medical professional, meaning his casual demeanor could be perceived as improper by those ranked higher. Nobody tends to argue with him anyway, even those of higher, higher rank than him. Dr. Bright sat, sat at the bench beside her in the hallway so it was more comfortable to continue a lengthier conversation while eating the food. So, I'm assuming there's a reason you're in front of my door? She said, while I'm calmly eating her food and drink. Finish eating first. Said Dr. Rattler while watching her. Aaron saw Dr. Clef pass by while finishing her meal. She hadn't proceeded to give him the middle finger. Mannered bright. Inigo said with a slightly firm tone. I'm finished. Did you have a reason besides food for standing in front of my door earlier? Bright inquired after finishing the meal. Oh, if I may. Doctor Rattler paused as though he had taken several things uh, had as though all the as all as though he had several things to speak about, but instead he lifts a stack of papers in front of Doctor Bright for her to take. Aaron looked confusingly at the papers, but grabbed the documents out of Doctor Rattler's hand as though they had been. Uh, through this routine before. The documents appeared to contain orders from the L5 Council. Dr. Bright's eyes began to widen in shock as she skimmed through the contents. Why on earth do they want me to watch a D-Class personnel cut the f into fi SCP-579's containment cell? It's an anti-meme. We never know what it looks like or what it does with D-Class after we leave the conversation desk. Also, why on earth did they give me a copy of SCP-963? We all know it doesn't work like the original. Aaron exclaimed angrily, as though someone had just allowed her to use a free-for-all punching bag to let out their own stupid steam. SCP-963 was an ornate amulet approximately 15 centimeters in circumference made from white gold, with 13... Uh, redacted carrot brilliant cut diamonds surrounding an unknown oval cut ruby in a starved burst pattern. Unlike the original SCP-963, this duplicate amulet in the Foundation's custody did not take the user soul and consciousness upon death. It's what they want. Dr. Rattler said hesitantly in response to Bright's outburst. Sorry. Shouldn't have yelled. You're inside. Guess I have to deal with this shit. See you later, Dr. Rattler. See you later, Aaron. Aaron Bright then proceeds to head 
to deep con down to deep containment, eventually arriving at SCP-5. Five nine five seven nine's containment cell. She then approached the two guards and the D class. So this is, so this D class. Wait, so so this D D class going into SV five seven nine's containment cell. She said, looking at the depressed, disheveled young Caucasian man in an orange jumpsuit. The guard on the left spoke. Yes, ma'am. That is the D class we will be using today. Aaron sighed and said, All right, let's get this over with. Send him in more when I get to the station deck. Yes, ma'am. The guards responded. Aaron proceeded to the observation deck and reached the control panel. She opened the cell doors and used the microphone to tell the guards to send in the D class. Aaron then pressed the cell button and the cell doors are closed. Alright, D-Class. Do you see anything? A response came through for ten minutes. D-9873456. Do you, or do you not, see anything? Before she could finish, the observation glass shattered. Alarms were activated along with high-pitched screaming coming from the observation deck. Both guards quickly investigated the commotion with their guns in hand. But all they found was the lifeless corpse of Dr. Aaron Bray. Wrapped around her wrist was what, was what appeared to be a copy of SCP-963, though it, with a pitch-black gem rather than the red, crimson red of the original. This new amulet was later designated SCP-963-3. One guard took the amulet into containment to be studied, and the other guard called for backup. SCP-579 was believed to have been returned to the containment cell, and the body of Dr. Aaron Bray was cremated. In an interrogation room not far away from SCP-579's containment cell, Agent Redacted, one of the seven agents who works on SCP-579, ordered D-Class 275-8235-6 to put on SCP-963-3. The lady, suffering from albinism, had pure white hair, pinkish red eyes, and a lean physique, picked up the amulet and placed it on herself. What the hell? Where the fuck am I? And who the hell are you? The D-Class shrieked out, gasping for air, trying to piece together what was happening to her. The agent doesn't seem surprised by this, and calmly said, I am Agent Redacted, and you are at the SCP Foundation. I know you must be shocked, but please, try to remain calm. Take a seat and allow me to explain. Uh, I, uh, okay, I, I will listen. They said while pulling out and sitting in the chair. The agent leaned forward on the table. Three days ago, you were killed when a breach of SCP-579 occurred. We aren't sure why this happened and why it attacked you. If you don't mind me asking, do you know why you are here? No, I, I don't. Why don't I know? She stammered, attempting to remember. Her fear began showing more on her face while trying to rationalize the situation. The agent, with a collective tone, said, You are safe now. There is nothing to worry about. I, I do believe you to be Dr. Aaron Bright, seeing as they were the only one who came in contact with the amulet. We're calling it SCP-963-3. I am not an expert in dealing with psychological trauma, thus I'm going to leave it in your hands with your only doctor friend. Who are they? You will find them when you leave the room. The agent stood and helped her to the exit of the interrogation room, opening the door. 
a tired and worried doctor holding a cup of cold coffee while sitting in the chair outside the room. All right, Aaron. Uh, this person here is your friend, uh, Dr. Adler. They're going to try to help you with your memories. Dr. Rattler got up and worriedly said. You can call me Indigo if you want to. Please come with me. I promise to help you out the best I can. Aaron hesitantly followed them. He showed Aaron the way to the containment sector elevator while walking in short and quick steps. The man used a temporary level 4 key card uh, on the key card scanner and typed in the code to the designation they wanted. Both of them entered the elevator before all three secured metal doors closed. The elevator was dimly lit and awkwardly quiet on the inside. Indigo's blue eyes glanced from the coffee cup before looking towards the ceiling. Lights. This will be the first time I ever get to see the tree that determines if I'm alive or dead. The furrowed expression he gains after speaking with that out loud seems to suggest a mistake it had been spoken quietly into acknowledgement. Dr. Rattler looked back to over towards Aaron, their stif stiffened frame softening its posture. Are you feeling tired, hungry, thirsty? We can get you something before going all the way towards our destination. I'm fine. Let's just give away what will help me with my memories. Aaron said coldly while looking away from him in the and at the steel wall. Indigo's exhausted expression turned back to their drink before speak quietly speaking up again. You used to say you were fine all the time, even when you skipped meals and most certainly needed fluids. I even had to push you to clock out and go to bed on more than one occasion. I guess this time I won't be able to get the truth out of you until you remember everything. She didn't respond to him as the elevator stopped and opened to a hallway. The medical professional took the paper cup to their face nearly chugging the last of the cold coffee. They crushed the temporary item with one hand before walking out of the elevator, placing it in a nearby compost bin. Their eyes scanned the barren hallways that had only titanium walls and doors to them. Is this what all the floors with the high permission are like? Is that why you typically did all your paperwork and other non-containment cell-related activities at lower-ranked floors? How on earth would I know? I don't even remember nothing. Said Bright with a cold demeanor and slightly aggressive tone. She slowly followed him out of the elevator, but kept her distance from him. Indigo glanced at whom he considered a friend before looking back at the sterile hallways. The man started walking in a way that seemed to suggest he knew exactly which direction to go in. I was hoping to jog your memory through other means. Holding one of my peppers on your person nullifies all effects any medications or anomalies had on you. You are a person with rank four clearance in the foundation, so I would assume that you would also that would also include some very horrible things. It would be nicer if you could remember things gradually instead. Then you wouldn't get hurt. His voice was laced with concern as the footsteps as his footsteps echoed through the quiet hallway. Aaron ignored him and said nothing as she continued to follow him. Dr. Rattler stopped walking before looking over at the albino female. We aren't continuing until I know for certain you at least heard the dangers of the item we are going to retrieve for you to use. Heard what you said, but I chose not to answer because I don't trust you, said Bright responding to get him moving again. If you don't trust me, then why should I show you the way to my tree? I'm trusting you with my life. You know that, right? You could at least remove the proverbial knife from my throat, because holding it too firmly might cause you to get hurt. The words were laced with concern as ever, despite the venom air aimed their way. Indigo started walking again still seeming to intend to bring her to the containment cell. 
fine. I'll trust you for now. But I'm still a little skeptical. What the hell are we doing? Aaron said, while following a bit closer to him. Thank you. The words were quietly spoken. Inigo was starting to wonder if this conversation was making the hallway feel longer. The answer is complicated. My father is Dr. Jack Bright, and my mother is... He paused his words as they reached a staircase. Starting to carefully walk down it, Dr. Rattler's expression had changed to something pensive and filled with dread. How do you explain someone so horrible as his own mother? The most accurate description would be something akin to a Mexican witch who has a tree person form. I am a human. My life force that became independent of her became a tree. Her magic is in taking the life force of humans and using it for her own benefit. My abilities lay in peppers that grow from the trees in their normal state. Holding one will cause you to remember everything. It will negate the effects of anything that might be blocking your memories, even if it's caused by something anomalous. Dr. Radley reached into his coat pocket, pulling out a small pouch. You don't remember this, but you were right about what you said concerning my mother. Those horrible things I spoke of that you don't remember, that should not be repeated. They were blocked out memories. She was gaslighting me. She tracked me down and started harassing me. This pouch has a combination of ingredients that includes a dried pepper of mine. This combination can't affect your memories, but can keep people from going inside your mind. In most cases, that is useless. It would be good protection from her. I want you to hold on to it, please. The vice council didn't give me permission to say we're related. But I know there's a chance that she might try to target you in the future because we are. The man stopped walking after getting to the bottom of the staircase, holding out the small pouch. That's a lot to take in. Sit here and while walking, while taking what was offered from him. Dr. Rattler smiled a bit, nodding. Their muscles loosened and eyes softened before gently saying, It's okay. Take all the time you need. The reddish brown skinned man started walking again after that. There weren't any other rooms, nor hallways in this area of the floor. Instead, there was one room on the left side. Getting closer to the door revealed a lack of any label, but it was still the door he had stopped at. Indigo Blue Eyes looked around the hallway with slightly confused expressions. Didn't say anything. Instead of speaking, he took the temporary level four clearance card out and used it on the lock next to the door. After that, he typed a code, causing it to open. There was a small five-step staircase that led down into the room. It was a 15-meter tall room that was a bit under seven meters wide. In the center of the room was the tree, was a tree that had fluffy reddish brown bark and a long thick trunk. The branches and leaves grew in a way that resembled the willow tree by its arrangement. Its leaves were a dark green with blue tips, shaped more like leaves from a pepper bush. The pepper seemed to be green when it was unripe, but a long slender indigo blue while ripe. The only lights were UV light panels from the above. The tree's canopy blocked most of its illumination, causing the room to have a dimly lit look to it. Surrounding the tree was grass and wild looking small plants. That's... It looks better than I expected. Indigo said with amazement. This is not what I expected. Thought there would be a forest with your tree. It's smaller in here than I would have guessed. Said Bright, looking around the containment cell. Inigo's footsteps echoed through the cold, hard staircase, 
but we're silent against the soil and grass. There wouldn't be a point to planting trees around mine, though there's all there's no point to the grass either. How is it growing when the tree is blocking most of the light? Dr. Ryler didn't expect anyone to give him any answer to this question. It was merely spoken out loud towards the void. The more peppers you have on your person, the faster you will regain your memories. How many should I get for you? The maximum amount I'm willing to pick for you to have on your person is three. I, I guess I'll take three peppers? Answered Aaron while she walked into the room after Rattler. Dr. Rattler nodded. Their expression was one of relief. Please just remember to take care of yourself and not overwork after you regain your memory. I'll be right back. Their eyes turned from the thin albino before walking over towards the tall tree. The shape of the tree, its branches, made it easy to pluck the fruit, despite the plant's large height. It didn't take long to obtain three ripe peppers, however. Turning to face Dr. Bright caused his pace to pale and frown. What are any of you doing here? Dr. Aaron Bright is, qualified, is a qualified person that belongs to the Foundation. I was given special authorization to come here to help her. Five fully dressed Foundation guards had begun to flood the entrance. The highest ranking guard began to say, You gave information to her you weren't authorized to. Also, the method of holding onto the peppers will take far too long. They mentioned to the other four guards, two moving towards Bright, the others moving towards Rattler. Oh, but, uh, but this was a fruitless action for someone with zero combat experience. Huh? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't... Yeah, you're right here. You're too far down. Yeah, <laughs> you're farther down. Wait, sorry. You're fine. Please don't force us to harm you, Doctor. We know your weakest point is the hair. The fear in Indigo's expression increased, a sickening feeling going through their throat and stomach. It isn't her fault. The man started to speak quietly, his feet moving slowly at first, before rushing to try to block the guards from reaching Dr. Bright. Don't hurt her! This is a fruitless action for someone with zero combat experience and average physical strength. As Rattler was trying to get to Aaron, one of the guards hit him in the head with the butt of the, their gun, knocking him unconscious. As Dr. Rattler fell to the ground, the peppers rolled out of his hand and were picked up by the lead guard. They headed over the pair of the guards that were now holding Dr. Hawk to holding Bright in place. Aaron was frozen in shock, trying to comprehend what was going on. She couldn't figure out why those people were doing this to her and Rattler. Everything was moving so fast for her. The lead guard forcefully jammed the peppers into her mouth. As Bright began, was made to swallow, she began experiencing the immense heat and pain from the peppers. Her head felt like it was imploding, and all of Aaron Bright's horrible and painful memories came rushing into her mind. Procedure 110 Montauk. What happens to the D-class at the end of the month? The death of so many good friends, to SCPs, and every traumatic memory came flooding back at once. The shell shock caused her to fall unconscious. Oh. I had just said, I asked to be messaged when my parts came up. I got that DM from Hatchet. I'm sorry, what? They said, a ha from Hatchet said, I asked to be messaged when my parts came up. Oh! Yeah, sorry about that. I, I just, uh, I, we, I actually didn't know what, what, what you were uh, doing, Hatch, so like, we, we I, I didn't thought know. they said to to contact them when we needed them. Oh, they're messaging. 
They, they're asking, why didn't you? Why didn't I? I, I was just I was locked into reading. I'm sorry. I, I thought Hatchet said that to, to contact them when, when necessary or needed or something like that. We didn't really know what was going on, so like we just yeah, we don't know what's going on. We know it's an emergency. It's typically like you don't contact someone when they're having an emergency. Yeah. Unless to ask if everything was okay or what's going Pretty on. Pretty much. That's... Yeah, I pretty much sent them that. I mean, they can still be like, um, the guy on the microphone at the end, if they, if they want to take that role, if Aderna doesn't mind. But Aderna, do you mind? Also, there's also other roles that he was taking, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. If they aren't unconscious yet. Oh. What's next is just the microphone guy. There's no more guard speaking. So next is just the microphone guy. Because you, Mo, you said that letter to fall unconscious, right? Yeah, that was the last part I read. Then yeah, it's just the microphone guy left. Okay. Um. Did Hatchet want to read for the microphone guy, or...? Like, I'm not, I'm not sure what's... I'm not sure what's, what, 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 what's really going on. <laughs> I'm gonna give a big shrug. I'm I'm asking right now. He hasn't responded yet. He's not. He hasn't responded yet. Well, they did say they were having an emergency. We have no idea what's going on. Well, they responded saying, "Uh, well." They said. If I was even an actual emergency, I wouldn't be asked to be messaged so I could come back. So I guess it wasn't a big emergency. It wasn't? No, I guess not. They haven't said anything. Why don't we just go on an intermission real quick? Yeah. Maybe might have to redo everything.
I'm hoping not to redo too far. You know, let's say I hope not. <laughs> I mean, they have an answer saying they want to take the microphone guy role. Also, welcome the entirety of me reading that string didn't disconnect, right? Because I'd be so fucking mad if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> that would wouldn't that be like just the fucking cherry on top of all of this yeah. fucking <laughs> oh man oh nope book says nope stream sounds good i think i read reveler better last time we did this than rather than this time What are you doing, step bro? That's his life. Oh, shove a stick in my ass and call me a lollipop. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? What's what's going on? I went to the the the, the moan soundboard, and it's this sussy lollipop. So I thought, I thought it was like the sucking sound, of the lollipop. No, it says, oh yeah, stick the lollipop up my ass. You oh. what? <laughs> you what? <laughs> you what? <laughs> you what? <laughs> I'm sorry? That big part? Pardon? It said more, but Jiri's here, and I don't want to say more. Yeah, please, no. Pardon? <laughs> what? What the fuck? What? Huh? What? What? What the hell? What? What the? What? 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 Hold Nani? on. Hold on, Momo. I got you. Oh. Hatchet responded. Panic okay. attack. Oh. Oh. Well, no. Why would we call you during... Why would we message you if you're having a... Yeah, why would we not have a panic attack? Wouldn't that be yeah. expensive uh, as a that, That's, that's like... Oh, yeah, that would make us... That would make us... Call us if, we need, if you need me. Yeah, but, I mean, God. Wouldn't that make us assholes? Yeah. I'm, at, I'm asking, are you okay? And then responded, please be okay. <laughs> That's a valid, valid thing. Oh, that's not what it, it said. I said it wrong, but I'm going to send what it said to Momo because I don't want to say it with Jiri. Momo, here's, here's what Momo said it said. I mean, Bookworm said it said. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I clicked it and yeah, yeah, I heard that. No. <laughs> What it said was even worse than that? Yes. Bam. Oh, look, I found Chew. It's called Demented Bark. <laughs> that sounds like Chew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see what's happening, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure why Hatchet thought we should contact them if they're having a panic attack. Besides to ask if they're going to be okay. I farted and a poopy almost slipped out. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop messing with the soundboard Bookworm sent me, but, so I'm going to favor it and then... Exit. <laughs> yeah, that was weird timing. But yeah, I'm I'm hoping Hatch is okay. Hey Hatch, welcome back. Hatchet, are you all right? 
Yeah, you, you don't have to force yourself to do anything. Yeah, you can take it easy for right now, man. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're muted at the moment. Uh, looks like they're typing. Uh, in voice chat? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, okay. yeah, in... Ah. Uh oh. We're sorry, Hatchet. We're sorry, Hatchet. We thought you were having an emergency, so we didn't want to bother you. It is true you did ask, but we didn't nature of the actual like emergency, which is part of the reason you why we didn't said respond. For us to contact you when like like an emergency like when it was like really important or something to come up. I imagine what's really important is less like voice acting roles and more like if someone got injured or something. Yeah. Oh. Oh.
three, two, one. And we're back. Don't worry, everyone. Uh, Hatchet Yay, is okay. We're back. Yay, we're back. <laughs> Yay, we're back. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I did not know you could do those creepy voices. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I yep, can... nice. Put that in your back pocket. Hey, if it makes you feel better, uh, Jerry, uh, I did a voice that freaked out Momo. Yeah, oh, you did. Never please do that again. Please don't. It was red when I voiced red. Oh. <laughs> Momo didn't think I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just heard it before. I hadn't heard, hadn't heard it before. Like I said, yeah. it's one of those things you you not you don't expect when you know you just you oh, I'm friends with this person who can do this thing. <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's the one in the handy dandy notebook. <laughs> Is that like the creepy version of Blue's Clues? Maybe. Wait, I will. Like no, I was just. It's a handy dandy notebook. <laughs> well, Jerry, I was more saying that as like, oh yeah, this is okay. This is information. This is information that I have now that I can. I, I don't think I ever know. actually heard that. Before. This is this is this is. Oh. Uh, Blue's Clues. Uh, the guy. No, in the Blue's the, the red say, voice. Like, Good. No, the, from the Godzilla, red. NES Godzilla. The red voice. Did you? I thought I sent it to you. You can listen to NES Godzilla. Oh, you. Oh, you might have. I. I probably forgot. <laughs> yeah. No. It's fine, Hatchet. It's. It's okay. I mean, everyone knows how forgetful I am. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you're ready to go back to it? I I think. Second thought, I think I I think I can handle reading. Oh, okay. Uh, the the guard voice when it comes up. Oh, uh, you mean the microphone guy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's all right. Uh, you ready, Momo? Yep. All right. All right, then let's do it. <coughs> Hang on, let me get a get a swig of some water. Uh -huh. Now you need alcohol. Alcohol negatively affects your voice. I know. <laughs> I would go get I would go get orange juice, but there's like a birthday party happening out out there, oh. and uh, one of the people out there I am not a fan of, so I don't trust oh. myself not to like knock him, knock his teeth down his throat. Anywho, <laughs> anywho, anywho, Aaron awoke in a dark room containing a CRT TV before she was startled by a booming voice over a microphone. I know you have been through a war recently, but I do believe that SCP-2030 can help you deal with what happened to you earlier. Did, did that go through right? Yeah. Well? Aaron jumped from her chair, threw it against the wall, and screamed at the voice. Why the hell should I do this, you devils? The voice grew louder over the speakers. <laughs> I, I feel like I could hear Momo a holding back chuckle. Sorry, sorry. You felt right. <laughs> uh, right. And also, you're good, huh? Yeah. Okay. okay. 
If you don't do it, we have ways of making you. As if that scares me. Do whatever you want, you mess with shitty assholes. Not doing anything you say. She yelled as she boiled in hatred and disdain towards the person speaking to her. A door to the left side of the room opened and two guards entered. Without saying a word, they started restraining Aaron to the chair. Get the hell off of me, you bastardized pieces of shit! She exclaimed viciously while kicking and thrashing at the armored guards. They ignored her, picked up the VHS tape, and placed it in the VCR. After having an immense struggle, getting Bright strapped into the chair. Both guards headed towards the door and left the room before the VCR started playing the episode. I told you, we have ways of making you watch this. You should have done as you were told. Go right in hell, you prick. Aaron said, shaking and clawing at their restraints. Before Aaron could continue insulting, the episode had started playing. The episode opened at a factory, ma factory with a man surrounded by multiple machines. The man is dressed up in a red three-piece suit. He had multiple chains attached to his limbs that stretched out to the machines around him. He was frantically going to each machine, making sure they were working, until all the machines roared their, si roared their sirens and flashing lights of red all around the man. Then the metal links pulled rapidly and lifted the man into the air, the chains pulling his limbs, causing them to stretch beyond the logical limits before bursting into large quantities of blood. The tattered remains of his body parts were sucked into the machines and came out of the outtake as confetti. Suddenly, a very tall, laughing person in a blue performance suit came onto the screen with the man's head. The mutilated man's head began to cackle and demanded everyone laugh. What the fuck is this shit you having me watch? Bright screamed out before anyone could answer her. All the lights went out, then back on. Anne was sitting on a stage with an imposing figure in front of them. Yeah, so that's it. And Momo, you said you wanted an episode of Laugh is Fun. Um, I wrote most of it, but Hatch helped with a little bit of it. That, that I, yeah. I knew you wanted that, so there I you go. I did want that. <laughs> Glad I got it. I... Fucking, <laughs> that sounds genuinely horrific. <laughs> I would like to point out. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Your mic cut off in Discord when you started to read your line there in the last paragraph. Oh, so no. sounded. So, so at least on my end, it sounded like you just said, What the fuck? <laughs> and then there was like a solid five <laughs> seconds of silence, and then, and then Momo just continues. I, I figured that the they could hear if they could hear it in the recording. Then yeah, you heard me yeah. say the full line, right? Uh, book I heard what the fuck, and then oh. like a cut, and then I just waited for a little bit longer before actually <laughs> reading. Also, Adjarna, we are hearing something in your background. It's, I think it's their sibling. Uh, Probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was my sibling. Yeah, Booker said I'm pretty sure I did. So, yeah, they heard <laughs> it. <laughs> what, what kind of response is I'm pretty sure I did? <laughs> but, yeah, so everything did get through. Right. Yeah. I. You know what I find funny? The, the laugh is fun episode. I took the less amount of time writing <laughs> than anything else. Like, I immediately knew what I wanted to do. But for everything else that I wrote, I had to, like, constantly have multiple streams playing everything out. Laugh is fun, just right. a few minutes. Right? It's least, not less. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I think it's because I read Laugh is Fun stuff a lot, so I was able to get a good idea of what the episode's gonna be. Probably. I don't know. Either that or my min mind's demented. 
answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> oh. Well, well, well I, I was glad you, we were able to get to do this finally. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Last week, I'm sorry, I, I had that uh, that cold, um, really bad. That really bad cold. Uh, my sinuses were acting up, so I couldn't even really read. Uh, yeah, I, I tried, I tried, but it wouldn't have been good. Well, we don't need that anymore. <laughs> so yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. There. I technically got six horror stories that are kind of shortish. They're like between nine, uh, sixteen, uh, twenty minutes long, so they're not super long. Why is this page ripped? Yeah. But, um, I'm gonna have, uh, everyone put to a vote which one I want read first. The first one is the bridge outside my bedroom window. Next is Turkey Molar. Next is Hotel Morte, the unwanted guest. After that, it's uh, turn it off. Then it's. Are you? Oh. I was oh. gonna ask you, doing this in Discord or in stream? Uh, Discord. Uh, next one's gonna be stream, and next one is my father punish me when I talk to ghost. And the last one is the kitchen drawer. Those are the options. That sounds like a great debate. I like how I said I was going to have you guys debate over it and yet no one's talking about it. Which one they want. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, I have a feeling that all four of us just like simultaneously got the idea. What if we just didn't say? <laughs> well, it wasn't even, even, even like that. Uh, uh, I, I really have to pee. Oh, okay. Uh, All I can think of is how I have to pee. Go pee, man. Okay, I'll be. I'll be. Go. Back. Yeah, go get a cup. <laughs> go. What? Go get a cup. <laughs> just. <laughs> is there a story about piss? <laughs> Do we have a piss story? Can we please not have... How about we not have a piss story? How about that? Can we not have a piss story? Can we try that one on, for size? Just because you said that, I'm going to write a horror story about piss. That's just gross. I'm searching creepypasta.com to see if there's a piss story. Sure. <laughs> Search sure. results for piss. First thing that comes up is the red raincoat. <laughs> that just sounds god-awful. Um, then another one is, I hate my friend's pet you're gonna wait write you're basically gonna write an Aaron Beauregard story like wait and I'm not minute. gonna be here for it right. another one is odor oh right. jeez this yes. is very important open mm -hmm. chat GBT oh my god and ask it to write a horror story about his I'm sorry, but I cannot assist with that request. Damn it. I hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna try something else. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I got it. Well, I sort of have it. 
I had to spell P U P E A. And it's making a story about a haunted pea farm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the haunting of the pea farm is what's called. Like P E A. Yeah. Like Yeah, like the like the vegetable. Yeah. Yep. Like yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, so in other words, when it's done with that, you take you copy and paste all that story into a different Google Doc. And then you replace all of the times that it says P with piss. <laughs> and then we see what we do, we get left with. That would be a funny stream if we do that. That, yeah. I'm gonna say that for like another stream. <laughs> That'd be really yeah, funny. Yeah, that's some other stream. No, that's a, that's an April Fool's stream. Yeah. We do a horror story stream on April Fools, and it's just nothing but us just. Typing completely cracked out bullshit into chat GBT. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you just anyway. like write a story about urine or something like that. <laughs> urine. Like make it more specific than that. Write a story about kidney stuff. Oh jeez. I had oh. kidney stones. They're not. F it didn't actually hurt. Good for you. Then again, I think mine was really small. They, that's pretty Wait, obvious. how did you manage... Bright, what? Yeah, it didn't hurt coming out. No, I'm just... How did you... I... I don't understand. Oh, how I got a kidney stone? Yeah, how did you manage that? Okay, so when I was really young, um, in order for me to actually drink something, because I had swine th flu really bad... Like crazy bad. Uh, uh, they gave me a bunch of sweet tea, and I drank uh, jugs of that, and oh, yeah, geez. that caused the kidney stone. And then the appro the the smartest thing that would have been to do is to then start uh like giving you giant tubs of coffee to drink. <laughs> <laughs> because caffeine actually helps to uh, dissolve kidney stones. It's barely oh. noticeable, but I remember reading about that. Oh. But yeah, that's also why I don't drink that much sweet tea. Even though I really like it, I barely drink it. Meanwhile, I'm just chugging a fucking cherry Pepsi. Speaking of fucking cherry Pepsi, I am so mad they don't sell cherry vanilla uh, Dr. Pepper in stores. That's a whole ass different company, bitch. I, I know. <laughs> I was gonna say that. I know it is. No, no. Wow, okay. Pepsi so, <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let me say something. Let me say something. I know Dr. Pepper isn't owned by Pepsi, but here's the thing. In a Pepsi machine at work, Dr. Pepper is on there. And also, in Kroger, oh, they put Dr. Pepper in Dr. Pepsi no, in funny. the Pepsi aisle. So, that's so funny. I know it's not a part of that company, but why is it there? Well, you see, the, the obvious answer is Virginia. <laughs> that's, that's the issue. Oh, shit. <laughs> Stop go making... to Jersey. Go what, to Jersey. That's even worse. What, are they, what, are they, what the fuck worse. are they doing over there in goddamn Virginia? Holy shit. You say you say Jersey is worse, but yes. I doubt that the Jerseys are the fucking Jerseys. <laughs> that the Jerseyans. Jerseyans that the, the Jerseysites. <laughs> I, I doubt that they're grouping their Dr. Pepper with their Pepsi. Yeah, well, my state at least has rights for uh, the entirety of trans people. And gay I feel people. like Jersey is also like uh, on the up and up. They, they, they were trying to get rid they, of them. They catch a lot of shit. Yeah. Jersey catches a lot of shit, especially New Jersey. But yeah. Well, I mean, almost all of them. Virginia was forced to remove trans people from the military. From the military. Uh, Fucking stupid. Come to think of it, 
where the fuck is like original jersey? Don't worry about it. Probably in Britain. Yeah, probably in yeah. Jersey is Jersey's the largest of the Channel Islands between England and France. France. Yeah. Oh, hmm. So that's why I didn't know what it fucking was. It's just so New Jersey is just named after some tiny ass piss island between <laughs> be, between fish and chips land. Yeah. And bread. The reason you didn't hear about it is because it doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I, I think I only think people that matters too is a bunch of those dirty tea drinking, crumpet eating, mass stabbing, <laughs> fucked up teeth having, wrong side driving, no queen having. Speaking <laughs> speaking of countries, uh, did you hear how uh, Russia wants to go after NATO? But at the moment, they lost half of their military and aircraft. Yeah, I, Did I, Russia's I, most powerful army also turn against it? Probably. Well, no, well, I, the, um, they're the, asking, um, aren't they? I think going to okay, uh, uh, North Korea the, for help. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> the Wagner, the Wagner group, uh, started the most piddly piss coup d'état imaginable. Uh, and then start, Prigozhin, start, yeah, Prigozhin yeah. got a... Uh, the, the fucking... He died in a the, fucking the, plane crash! Yeah, the, the fucking fascists, you know, go to go talk to the other fascists and say, give us more money. And then the Kremlin <laughs> fascists said, you know what, fine. Uh, we'll just give you money. So they go back to the front lines. And then, they're mis- and then their leader just happens to end up dead <laughs> in a plane crash. Just all their leader, there. come on, Hatchet, all their leader wanted to do was nation build in Africa like every other European nation got the chance to. What's so yeah, bad about it's, that? It's, it's not that bad. There's so many things wrong with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Sar- no, sarcasm. Yeah. It's sarcasm. Yeah. It's sarcasm. Yeah. sarcasm. Yeah, we were, we were being sarcastic. The continent on all of Earth, and there's so many countries. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Europe. Yeah. yeah, okay, but so that's literally what that fascist loser wanted, and then he ended up mysteriously oh, <laughs> dying in oh, a plane. Oh, oh, speaking of, <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, speaking, of, speaking of like fascist dying, I, I saw this one video that was like the leader of a like small fascist party in Ukraine that was just like doing a speech, and this guy just he looks ancient. Like he he looks mm-hmm. like a resurrected corpse. He's so old, and the 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 video is just of him giving some speech. He just actually falls over dead on camera. Oh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just had a fucking heart attack. A man, a man had a coronary television <laughs> <laughs> Pass the fuck away. It's, a, yeah. it's just oh, shit. that sounds That's... like karma. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Also, <laughs> before we continue to choosing which horse Ryuk, race next, Ryuk scooped up his soul. There's one thing I want to also speak about Russia. Apparently, um, speaking of Africa, since Hatchet brought that up, uh when in a Chinese I embassy in an African country, I forgot which one, a bunch of wait, back up. I didn't Stop mixing me up with other people. I didn't bring that up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoever brought it up. But anyway, you Chinese brought it up, world. right? You brought it up. I thought Hatch is. Or, oh, I'm I, talking about the thing that I brought up that I think oh. someone else brought up. Oh, it was Jerry. Oh. Okay, what? sorry. No, I anyway. oh, well, uh, oh my god. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Like you, Bryce. I'm sorry. Let me just continue on to the story. <laughs> um, here's the thing. In an, in an, I don't know which African country, but. In a Chinese embassy in African country, a bunch of Russian people started throwing stuff at the Chinese embassy, and China is thinking Russia is trying to declare war on them. What? Yeah, it happened. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by stuff? You mean it was throwing like what? I think it was like Crash. bricks. Oh. Because you said it like stuff. I was like, was they throwing shit? Like what the fuck? I think it was bricks and um. Uh, other hard objects like they're breaking windows. Other hard objects. 
other well, hard objects. Chinese and I'm outside of China, I would also throw those things. Yeah. Yeah, but China's not taking it well. <laughs> but uh, I was simply going to mention, having now learned of the piddly piss island mm -hmm. that is Old Jersey, I decide to look it up. And there is, uh, as of uh, 2011 to 2021 population estimate, Jersey's resident population at the end of 2021 was estimated to be 100 and 3,100 people. They've got a tenth of a million people. Yeah, we, we, so, 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 just so you know, Bright, mm -hmm. given the contents of the stream, you may or may not have uh, one tenth of a million people from the piddly piss <laughs> island of Jersey uh, be angry because we're mocking their piddly piss island. <laughs> Anyways, do you they guys can, need they me can to fight us for it? Anyway, do you guys they need can, me to read they the story? On, they can get on a boat or get on one of those little <laughs> crop duster planes, and they can fly over here and they can say it to our face. No, no, no. Here's here's bunch the real of shit. Colonialists have the nerve to no. sit up and no. <laughs> here's the actual no, thing we do. Yeah. Here's Cold here's the actual right. thing we do. Okay, we host a tournament oh. where we get <laughs> where we get. A hundred thousand random New Jersey residents and have them fight all the people from old Jersey. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't think that's legal. It's not legal, but I could see New Jersey people wanting that. Well, you see, that's the thing. If everyone consents, it is in fact legal. Probably. <laughs> Probably. And when old Jersey people try not to fight, the New Jersey ones call them panty bitches. You know what? Okay, are you afraid? You know what? Here, let me check something. Uh, Jersey laws duels. Oh, let me see. Are duels? Oh wait, no, no. This is this is saying are duels still legal in New Jersey? That's not what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> you just bring all the people from Jersey in the New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, what about old Jersey? Old Jersey laws duels. Dueling was outlawed in both states of New No, not not <laughs> the states. Google won't even <laughs> give you information <laughs> on the laws of Jersey. They okay. won't even acknowledge those fuckers. That's okay. how bad it is. Uh, if Google don't acknowledge that ass, you know they don't what, exist. What country owns jersey i swear uh, if it's the united states <laughs> okay so jersey is a british crown dependency okay Aww. is dueling legal in britain <laughs> from the early 17th century duels became illegal in the countries where they were practiced god damn it <laughs> Damn it, England. Fucking illegalized our fucking fun. <laughs> it's the Brits again. You know what, matter of fact, Jersey, Jersey, send your best warrior. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, send well, here's, here's the warrior, second. Here's right? the check in. Here's the second test. Uh, let me let me go back to when it was telling me if it was illegal in New Jersey. Our duels uh, states that two individuals cannot okay okay yeah so so i, I was gonna check mm -hmm. yeah so dueling is outlawed in new jersey so we need to find some place to get all these people together and fight where dueling is still allowed antarctica texas texas, oh, okay. texas still allows duels i remember oh. that so we're ship we're shipping the old jerseyans and the new jerseyans over to texas so we can get them in the octagon together. I'm pretty sure all the Texans will see that and try and join. <laughs> try to join. Uh, well, which <laughs> side are they joining? That's the question. Neither. <laughs> it just, it just, they don't want them. They on their own. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want them. They don't... Shit. <laughs> it's the Hunger Games to them. <laughs> What, what, what were you laughing at what I said? 
Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just laughing about that. Said, my bad. The fucking stream is like the queen. Me. The queen don't want them. Queen don't want anything. She... I think this is a good break, aren't we? Maybe she wants the worms to get off her ass. Yeah. Well, yeah. correction, Momo. Like literally, right about a year ago, the Queen of England made her greatest contribution to human oh, history. God. <laughs> she died. Yeah, she fucking died. <laughs> Anyways, you bit it. <laughs> and then, I'm happy she's dead. Yeah, and then, and then, when I remembered that that was the day it was, I listened to uh, the Irish Liberation folk song "Come Out Ye Black and Tans" on repeat for like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I her. didn't they throw like a huge firework party when she yeah. died? <laughs> Why wouldn't she? It was, it was somewhere over the internet briefly. I heard, but I cannot find it. So I guess Britain kind of like closed it off from the internet or something. Like, no, no, you're not allowed to party for her death. <laughs> Watch like. Every colony that Britain used to have just partied when she died. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of them did. They did. Shit, I, fucking, I was, uh, I was happy. Ireland, it was like, you know, the, there was like a game. It was really like a famous uh, video because they had like a game, like a soccer game over there. Wait a minute. And the motherfuckers right? turned around and like, it's like, please, a moment for silence for the queen. It was like, Lizzie's in a box, in a box. I was like, hey, yo. <laughs> That shit Listen, is fucking hilarious. We're building up a war. You know why no one's ever heard of Old Jersey? Because what? the British government uh -huh. could not handle the fact that Old Jersey was celebrating the Queen's death so hard, so they erased Old Jersey from everyone's memories. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how it's from the internet. This shit. <laughs> Not just that. They did some SCP shit. They amnesticized the entire world so everyone for forget about the, the fucking hundred million or hundred thousand people living on piddly piss old Jersey. Okay, Hatchet, the second you, you said I during an SCP stuff, I was scared that you're gonna do, say the same thing that they did to Japan. No. <laughs> for a moment there. Oh, I was man. scared. Wow. Why would I bring that up? Wow, right. Wow. You're the one wow, who brings Aaron. that. Fuck. Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. That's what went through my head. I was like, oh. Holy fucking uh -oh. soul. Well, you don't need to it's say it. That you're stupid, but that's, Hatchet isn't. Wow. Just so you know, that's, that's... Hatchet isn't you. Hatchet isn't stupid. I know. Jesus, and, wow. That was, and... that was, that's, that's pretty bad. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say it like that. Wait, Momo, does okay. Momo even understand what I mean about SCP Foundation in Japan? Well, no, you said it's up. I, I thought you were referring to the other thing with Japan. No. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Fuck. No, dropping no. dropping awful weapons of death on their islands. Oh, no. You see, you see, uh, you see, SCP lore, the SCP Foundation, uh, did something significantly worse than that. Yeah, I, I believe that. They wiped because... out most of the uh, population because they were infected by an emoji virus. The only effects of the emoji virus was using emojis more. Yeah. And they committed... <laughs> I, I... That. They did that. Um, so, well, you know what? Honestly... <laughs> I'm not really that surprised. This is the SCP <laughs> Foundation. But so, anyway. So that means Japanese but... is technically a rarity in the SCP Foundation. And SCP Universe, if you think about it. But anyway. <laughs> now that we've concluded yeah. episode 2539 of Bright being racially insensitive. Hey. What were what were what were our what were our options? Oh, okay. right. Uh, we got the bridge outside my bedroom window. Turkey Molar. Hotel Morte, the unwanted guest. Turn it off. My father punished me when I talked to Ghost. 
and the kitchen drawer. I need to get off Twitter because when, when the, 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 my father punished <laughs> my brain guest. just went wrong. Okay, Jerry says unwanted guest. I, I'm thinking the bridge. Okay, we got one uh, vote for bridge, one for unwanted guest. I don't like the bridge. It kind of sounds like a weird pervert for some reason. <laughs> I like bridges. <laughs> That's fair. All I right. also like bridges, but the title, that bridge title sounds weirdly perverted, and I don't even know why. Anyway, <laughs> Momo, Aderna, it's up to you. Will you break or keep the tie? Just get to a four-way tie. <laughs> yeah, and then I have to choose. <laughs> then it's up to me. No, then it's up to Bookworm to choose. Isn't there like six options? Bookworm could just make it a five-way tie. Yeah. Then <laughs> I choose to make it a six-way tie. <laughs> and then the stream just ends. <laughs> choose not to choose. Momo, you have to choose, motherfucker. Oh, the who? Who, 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 who are you talking to like that? I know you ain't talking to me like that. <laughs> Penis. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never did that in front of Momo. Nothing I, really, nothing I can really say about that. <laughs> I never the did one in front joke of Momo. Got paraded out of the bag again. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway. Momo, you got it? What's your choice? Uh, I choose not to choose. You have to choose, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> so wait, what? Well, so, um... The bridge story. Bridge story, I'm fine with that one. Okay, that's two. Two against one. Aderna. What are the options again? Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got the bridge outside my bedroom window. Turkey Molar, Hotel Morte, the unwanted guest, Turn It Off, My Father Punished Me When I Talked to Ghost, and The Kitchen Drawer. Hmm. The ghost one sounds interesting. Did you say the first one? Yeah, I said the first one sounds interesting. So that's, so, so that's three to one. <laughs> That's three also, votes Patrick, I have something I have something bridge. to tell you that was funny that happened while playing Borderlands 3. Oh. Okay. I'll, I'll take it it's not like like the actual game spoiler. As if bright it could be spoilers of a spy side quest <laughs> thing. Oh, okay. So. Is it okay to say yeah. it? Or? Go ahead, I don't care. I, I, I imagine. I don't like, give a I, I, fuck. Like, for the side okay. quest, like, like I, I was, like, I was already spoiling it to Bright that we were gonna kill the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, yeah, and I didn't give a flying fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, for the, so, oh, for the, um, uh, quest uh, one of the side quests um you you do you remember the like one where you're supposed to like drive around like um this girl named lizzie's like um grandfather or something oh yeah that one yeah i remember that one so oh. funny thing i i accidentally killed them <laughs> <laughs> i accidentally killed him i drove off the cliff <laughs> People. And on that note, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm head off. I'm gonna head into chat. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's fair. All right. Yeah. Oh wait, Momo. Before yeah. before exactly. you leave, I I forgot mm -hmm. to ask you a while ago. Uh huh. Do you want pictures of my v new VTuber model's progress? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's like a ton of them. <laughs> Absolutely. I am down. I um. I'm also getting. I'm getting another artwork for um, my one character that I sent in the fan club. That is not a cult. It's a fan oh. club. Um, yeah, so I'm sending some more artwork. Of, I'm getting more artwork of that commissioned, and I should have that at some point soon. But uh, probably like 
like in the next two weeks. So the when the guy says he's finished, so yeah, you know. I can't wait to see it in the cold. That I, it's not a cold. <laughs> They're not, it's not a cult. For now. Not, For now. It, it's not a it's not a cult, right? Like I said, I know, I was just for I now. Was just and anything can be and a cult if you forever. really want it to be. And forever. Christianity is a cult. It I on that I mean I think yep, it. I'll see y'all. Um, I'm I'll be in Twitch <laughs> chat. I'll be on Twitch chat. You'll have a nice Take day. Take care, Momo. Yep. Take care, Momo. Have a wonderful day, Momo. I love how that was the Christian who said that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. Alright. Let me see as to how long is... It does not look that long. It is... 18 minutes. Alright. You guys ready? Yeah, and then when this is done, I also have, I, I could either, I could either read The Raven, or I could read, uh, Mos or the, uh, the Mask of the Red Death, both by Poe. I mean, we could ask Bookworm which one to choose. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll make a Poe for you to start. Alright, so I guess everyone mute, and then I go ahead and read. What's this you say about beauty? Anyways, I don't I'm going to leave and come back so I don't get cut off. Did it get cut off when I said that? Yes, yes you did. <laughs> oh my god. Fuck you. <laughs> Anyways. You ready? <clears throat> no, that's... Oh. I, I'm not ready. That's why I muted. I will oh confuse god. you. My God! And if we're ready now, <laughs> okay, good. Perhaps. Go ahead. The bridge outside my bedroom window. Toby's journal, entry one, April fifth, nineteen ninety. So I asked my daddy to buy me this journal. He's always been a great father, even though he isn't the same after my mom died. He's, he was always big on teaching me how to write and stuff. He said words are the most important thing ever. He writes books for a living, so I guess he kind of wants me to do it too. He acted pretty happy when I told him I wanted to write stuff down. So he bought me this really cool diary with, like, a leather cover. I was five when mom had the heart attack that took her away from me and dad. But I still remember her pretty good. I'm nine now, but I still miss her. I start to forget her face sometimes. But we have plenty of photo albums and stuff that I look at a lot. My daddy gets really sad sometimes. And I even hear him crying at night. He's tried to date a little. But he always says that nobody can compare to mommy. It would be weird if you met someone, though. I mean, would I have to call her mom? You know, she'd just be some lady. I still want Dad to be happy, even if it would be awkward for me. I didn't really want this diary to write about the sad stuff, but I've heard it's good to put that kind of thing down to help folks deal with them. Still, that's not why I asked my daddy for it. The thing is, some weird stuff happens at night sometimes. I mean, I guess it's not weird stuff as much as just a weird thing. It only happens every couple of weeks, and sometimes only once a month. So I suppose it's not really a big deal. It's been happening since before my mom died, but it freaked me out at first. I guess I was just a dumb kid the first time I saw it, but I'm older now, and I know it's not normal. I started to ask my dad about it, but it sounded nuts when I, I said it out loud, so I told him I was just playing. It's like a bridge 
that leads away from my bedroom window. It kind of reminds me of those wooden ones that you see in the woods, but it's crazy long. <coughs> the first time I really looked at it, I was a bit scared because it wasn't there before, and then it was. It looks like I could just open my window and walk across it, but what if it vanishes while I'm on it? I don't want to splat on the ground or anything, but I really want to see where it goes. It just appeared the other day, so I guess it won't come back for a bit. I'll write more when it does. Entry 2, May 2nd, 1990. The bridge came back last night. I wasn't feeling good, so I didn't even go look at it. I could see it out the window, though. It made sounds this time, too. I have epilepsy. Or something. But I can't really s say it right. It makes my body do weird things sometimes. And I kind of black out after. My dad says I have some other problems too. But I don't really know. I have to take a bunch of pills every day. And some of them make me feel a bit dizzy. But daddy says I gotta take them. None of that stuff was what was wrong with me last night though. I think I got a cold or something. For some reason my dad... My daddy gets really worried about me when I have a bug of any kind. He says I have a broken immune system or something like that. I hate when he uses big words. I think he makes them up sometimes. I don't feel good at all though. Maybe I'll feel better next time the bridge comes. Entry 3. September 14th, 1990. I feel better now. I have another new pill I gotta take, but the doctor said it'll help me fight off inflections. I haven't seen the bridge in a long time. I don't know if I, if it got bored waiting for me to get out of the hospital. I guess I wouldn't wait around for someone if it looks like they'd moved away. It's okay though. My daddy started talking to one of the nurses from the hospital. They laughed a whole lot, and she kept touching his arm. He talks to her on the phone a lot, and they've been going out to dinner sometimes too. She's a nice lady though. It is kind of weird to see them holding hands, but Daddy looks really happy. It might be weird if they got married, but I don't mind. Okay, I want to go play now. I can't write on you all day, diary. <laughs> Entry 4, October 29th, 1990. Halloween is almost here. I'm so excited. Daddy says I, I can't trick or treat for too long because it, it's kind of cold outside and he don't want me to get sick again. I bet I can talk him into letting me stay out longer though. Nurse Mandy is going to be there too. And I know she's a sucker for my puppy dog eyes. She's really, she really is a nice lady. And she's been at the house a lot lately. I thought I heard her arguing with daddy the other night. But he told me they were watching a scary movie. And it made her scream a whole lot. I asked him if I could watch the movie too. But he said it was only for grown ups. I got to watch some kind of scary movies. But they were only kids scary. Nickelodeon has been playing some s silly spooky cartoons, but they're really fun. They play the Garfield Halloween one, and I like that one a lot. It's even got ghost pirates. They kind of scare me though. I guess they're supposed to be scary, so I don't mind. I don't really like the singing parts, but it's still my favorite. I do like the Charlie Brown one too, but it hasn't come on yet. So the bridge came back last night again. I really wanted to open the window and climb out onto it this time, but it still makes me nervous. I tried to stay up all night to see how long it stayed there, but I ended up falling asleep after a while. It was there for a really long time though. I don't know when I conked out, as Nurse Mandy says, but I know the bridge was there for hours before I did. I really want to go out there soon, but I don't want to miss Thanksgiving or Christmas. 
If it goes away before I can come back. It would really suck if I got to the other end and it vanished. I'll make sure I wear my watch when I go when I do go on it though. If it takes like hours to get across it, maybe I'll just turn right back. I know my daddy would worry if I was gone too long. Nurse Mandy is going to order pizza soon, so I'm going to take my shower before it gets here. I sure am hungry. Entry 5, December 23rd, 1990. It's almost time for Christmas. I know that was way too many explanation points, but I'm crazy excited. I've been super good this year, even though I punched Ben, the kid next door, in the mouth last week. He was making fun of me because because I'm homeschooled, and he called me handicapped. I don't know what that means, but Dad said it was a shitty thing to call me. I'm not supposed to say words like that, but I don't think it counts if I write it. Even though I didn't get it, it still made me mad. And I socked him in the face. He's like a couple of years older than me, but he cried like a baby. I know it was mean, and I shouldn't have done it, but my daddy just laughed about it. He told me Santa would forgive me because I was sticking up for myself. <laughs> I hope he's right. I've been working really hard for extra super good this year. I really, really want a Super Nintendo. I guess they make them at the North Pole, but I, I hope I've been good enough to get one. Daddy said he has a good feeling about it, but he said he can't make promises or anything because Santa can be unpredictable or something. Anyway, the bridge came back like three times since I wrote in here last time. I didn't go on it though. I really wanted to. The la That last time I even opened my window to get a better look, but I was too scared to get on it hit the wood of my hands and it's and it really is real i mean it feels like it's there anyway next time it comes back i might get on it if i'm not too chicken it kind of sounds like it talks a bit i mean i guess it's not really talking words but i think it wants me to walk on it i want to do it for sure but not until after christmas it's only two days left i'm crazy excited <laughs> see if I'm, that's just was even more explanation points than last time. <laughs> Entry 6, February 20th, 1991. My daddy is getting married to Nurse Mandy. It's still kind of weird, but he's really happy. He lets me call her Mandy, though. It would be crazy weird to call her Mommy. I mean, she's a super nice lady, and she buys me a lot of cool stuff. But I just don't feel right to call her Mom. I got my Super Nintendo. It's so cool. And Mandy and Daddy play on it with me. I still have fun when it's just me playing. But it's cool when they join in. I actually went on the bridge last night. I was going to go last month when it showed up. But it was only a couple of days after Christmas. And I got a lot of really cool stuff. I got Final Fight, Super Mario World, and F-Zero with my N Nintendo. I got some Ninja Turtles, some Transformers, and some Star Wars toys, too. I got some board games, also, but they're not as fun to play as my super awesome Super Nintendo. Anyway, so the bridge was pretty long. I felt like I was walking forever. I almost turned back a couple of times, but I was brave and kept going. What was really scary was it looked like I was in outer space when I was on, on it. Like, I didn't even see my street underneath me. All around me were stars and purple and blue clouds and stuff. It was really cool looking, but I'm glad the bridge had railings because I would have fall, fallen off for sure. It was really hard to keep my eyes on the road, like Daddy says, when we're in the car. When, uh, in the car. There was just so much cool stuff all around me. I kept looking up and down and all around. So when I got to the end, after walking for like a whole hour, there was just a round patch of grass with a guy sitting at a table. 
There is still space all around us. But there is also a weird looking lake beside the round field thing. And another guy sitting on a boat. But I couldn't see what he looked like because he was wearing a hood. He didn't really look at me. He kind of scared me a little. But the other guy at the table was a really nice old man. He had a long beard and a super long hair. And it was tied up behind his head. He kind of looked like he could be Santa's brother or something. But he didn't wear a red suit or nothing. He wore, wore a weird gown or something that looked a bit like my dad's bathrobe. I kind of wondered if he had just got out of the shower before I showed up. Maybe he was swimming in the, in the shiny lake that the boat was on. He was a bit weird, I guess, but he was really nice and asked me to play a game with him. I asked him what kind of game, because my daddy warned me about strangers who want to play messed up games with kids like me but it was just board games i asked him what he had and he said whatever i wanted it was crazy because i didn't see any boxes or nothing i asked him if he had hungry hung hungry hippos or sorry because i'm really good at those he reached under the table and pulled them both out it was wicked cool because i didn't even see them before i've seen them there before so he said he only had time to play one, but he told me that I'd have to go with, with him if I lost. And that kind of scared me because I don't want to leave my daddy in Super Nintendo. But I had a good feeling I could beat him. He sounded smart and stuff, but I'm awesome at Hungry Hippos. I totally kicked his butt. He didn't, he didn't even have a chance. He actually looked happy that I won. It smiled really big. His teeth were super white for being such an old man. They were probably falsers or something, but they looked real. So he said goodbye, and he told me I should get going too. I ran back across the bridge, but coming back to my house went way faster than going away from it. Anyway, it was pretty neat, but I was happy to get back to my room. My body feels tired a lot, but it didn't feel like that when I was on the bridge. Or when I was here... <laughs> or when I was hanging out with the old man. As soon as I got back through my window, I got s crazy sleepy though. I just flopped into my bed and fell right to sleep. It was a pretty cool time, but I don't know if I'll go back next time. Entry 7, September 6, 1991. This is really weird. I went back on a bridge when it came back a month after the last time. I wasn't going to go because my body's been feeling really bad. I remembered that it felt good when I went out there. I played Monopoly with the old man this time because I'm really good at that too. The game went on for a really long time. Like super crazy long. I still kicked his butt. But when I got back to my bedroom, it wasn't my bedroom. The bridge hadn't changed drugs or anything. But it... It took me to a hospital. I was really tired when I got through the window. And I just fell into the bed that was there. But when I woke up, it was like six months later. My daddy and nurse Manny came running in when I woke up. And they said I hadn't been I had been in a coma or something. And that's weird because my daddy taught me all about comas when he was teaching me how to write. But he never told me I could catch one. He said it was a different type of comma, but I still didn't get it. He told me I had a really bad epileptic seizure or something like that, and that's what made me have a coma. I told him about the bridge, and he said I don't need to go on it anymore, even though he don't believe me. He said it was probably a product of my imagination. Or a weird dream I had, and I, but I shouldn't go out there anyway. I told him how it made my body feel better, but he still said no. It kind of sucks because I really like the old man who plays games with me, and I don't want him to think I'm mad at him or anything. I guess I won't go again though. I don't want to make my dad, my daddy cry again. He hasn't done that since he married Nurse Mandy, but he was crying like a baby when I woke up. I told him I was sorry, and he said it wasn't my fault, but I still kind of felt bad. 
I got to start to write about the weird stuff, so I don't know if I'll write any more. I do kind of like it, but most of the stuff I do is too boring to write about, I guess. I just got back home today. I want to write this stuff down before I forgot. Daddy and Mandy are, wants me to play, play Super Nintendo with them, so I'm going to go do that. Entry 8, June 17, 1992. I had almost forgotten about my old diary until I found it under the bed. I'm moving, into, I'm moving to a new neighborhood. My dad's not letting me help much with boxing stuff up. I still grabbed a couple of boxes to pack up some of my things, though. Cause I'm pretty busy with the move, so I didn't want any of my stuff to get lost or messed up. I turned 11 last week, and my spelling is a whole lot better now. I read through what I written before, and I didn't even realize how bad it was. <laughs> I still have trouble with some of the bigger words, but I'm getting better. My body feels a lot worse these days, though. I guess that's why my dad doesn't want me helping much with the move. My epilepsy has been a little better lately, but my immune system is having more trouble now. I had to get a bunch of tests after my six-month coma, and the doctors discovered I have leuke leukemia or something. I have to get these awful treatments, and they make my body feel even worse. My dad says the town we're moving to is close to a, to a faculty that can help me more than the doctors here. I hate all the all the tests and treatments, but Mandy says that they're only to help me feel better, but they just make me feel like crap. I feel kind of bad and want that they're we're having to move to a new town just for me. That said, he does have his work from home anyway. But Mandy is going to have to work at a whole new hospital. She says he doesn't mind, but I still feel bad. I, I guess it will all work out, though. At least I'm homeschooled, so I don't have to worry about being awkward around other kids. The bridge has still been showing up every month or so. I did what Dad asked and never got back on it. I really wanted to when I've been feeling rough, though. I guess I won't have to worry about it when we move. It took me to the hus it took me to the hospital, but I don't think it'll know where to follow me to the new house. I wonder if the old guy is mad at me for not coming to see him anymore. I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna finish boxing this stuff up now. I may write again when we get to the new house. Entry 9, November 18th, 1992. So we've been at the new house for a couple months now. It's pretty nice, but my bedroom is on the first floor now. My dad said I'm too weak to have to go up and down the stairs now. I guess he's right. I feel really bad lately. I couldn't even go trick-or-treating this year, which really sucked. Even though my room is right next to a big tree, the bridge still followed me again. It's really weird how it just cuts the tree short. But it's a full tree again by morning. Or I wanted to climb out there last night. Everything hurts now. My new doctors have been trying a bunch of new stuff. And I still have to get the awful treatments too. I used to be scared of needles. And they'd always make me cry, but they don't bother me anymore. Mandy says I'm a pincushion now. It's kind of funny. And the way she said it, it makes me laugh. But I just want to be a normal kid. See the neighborhood kids playing out in their yards, but I don't even get to leave the house anymore. Unless it's to go to the doctor. I just wish I could be like the other kids sometimes. I have plenty of toys and stuff that other kids don't got. But I want to be able to run around too. I guess I shouldn't worry about it. Things could always be worse. My dad says when I'm feeling down. I bet I could run onto the bridge though. I think I'm going to take a nap. Entry 10. March 8th, 1993. I went on the bridge again last night. 
I know I'm not supposed to, but I just wanted to not hurt for a little while. It was nice to see the old man again. He seemed really happy to see me too. He kind of looked a little sad, but he wasn't mad at me for staying away. What was super amazing this time was my mom was there. Well, she wasn't like there there, but the old guy made it so I could talk to her through the table. We usually play the games on. I guess that sounds kind of weird, but that's what happened. The table's round and it's usually just a solid piece of wood, but he made it do some cool stuff. He like dipped his finger into the top of it and it, and it turned into a kind of wood looking liquid when he did. He swirled it around and it turned into super clear and shiny water. After a few minutes my mom's face appeared in it. She could see me too. I know she, it was her right away. Even though I didn't look at the photos much anymore. She started crying when she saw me and I did too. I know I'm older now and I shouldn't cry anymore, but I did. I could hear her voice, but it sounded like she was really far away. Dollman said we could t only talk for a couple of minutes, but it was amazing. I had forgotten how much I missed her. After I got to say, after I had to say goodbye, I would say we don't have any time for a full game, but we still kind of had to play something. He said it's part of the rules, whatever that meant. He just pulled out a deck of cards and sat, sat it on the table. Then it turned back to wood. He told me high card wins, so I grabbed the one on top. He split the deck in two and grabbed the next one down. He only had a three of diamonds and I had a six of spades. He laughed and told me I had got him again and I laughed too. I hugged him before I left because I still feel bad for staying away. He told me that folks don't normally do that here, but he didn't mind. I waved goodbye and went back home. As soon as I got back to my room, my body started hurting again and I got back in bed. It was really weird because as soon as I lay back down and closed my eyes, some guy pushed my eyelids back open and shone a flashlight in them. I hadn't even seen anyone else in my room, but my dad and Mandy were in there with the other guy with the light. The guy was a paramedic, my dad said. He told me I had an episode, whatever that meant, but I told him I just got back. I didn't want to tell him I got on the bridge again, but I kind of had to. He wasn't mad, though. He started crying again, and I had to go back to the stupid hospital. I'm going to be here for a few days, but they let me bring my diary so I could write stuff down. My dad wanted to read it. But I told him it's private. <laughs> I'm hooked up to some weird flashing machines, and I got and I got needles stuck in me again. But I got a TV in my own room all to myself. I wonder if Dad could bring my Super Nintendo. That's not a whole lot of channels on the TV. I'm gonna ask him. Entry eleven, December twelfth, nineteen ninety three. It's snowing outside. I really wish I could go play in it, but I'm back in the hospital again. Stupid hospital. I hate it so much. My grandparents came to see me yesterday, and they kept crying and stuff. Of course, them crying made me cry, and I didn't even know what I was crying about. My dad had been staying here with me. He sleeps in another room, though. Doctor said I can have folk. I can have folks in here for too long because I can get infections easily. I did get get to bring my Nintendo with me and a couple other toys. I've been in he, been here for a while this time. I guess it's not too bad, but I don't think I'm going to be home for Christmas. I wonder if Santa will bring my presents here. Or if I'll wait, I have to wait until I get back home. Maybe Dad or Mandy can bring them to me. It hurts me to move much nowadays, but I bet I can still unwrap a present like a champ. My hair fell out. I was upset about it for a while, but I guess it's okay. It was hard to wash it when I was in the hospital last time, and it would get itchy sometimes. My head gets really cold without hair. That's 
really weird. But Mandy said it, it looked handsome with a bald head. And that's weird too. The bridge has been outside the window the whole time I've been in here. I kept wanting to go out there, but I don't know if I can with all these machines hooked to me. I don't even know how to open a window here. I guess I don't need to go out into the cold though. I never really paid attention if it was cold or hot on the bridge. I guess I'm going back to sleep. It's hard for me to stay awake too long these days. Maybe it's all the medicine they keep giving me. I am really tired though. Entry 12, December 26, 1993. Santa must have come to the hospital. I had so many presents when I woke up Christmas Day. I had to get my dad to help me open them because I'm really weak now. I s got some new games for my Super Nintendo though. Me, Dad, and Mandy played a lot yesterday. It was a lot of fun, but I got tired out pretty fast. I stuck it out though. I didn't see my dad smile much for a while now. Him and Mandy were both having such a good time. I didn't tell them I was feeling bad. I think I was about to go to the bridge again. It kind of looked different now. It looked, it's like it's brighter in a way. It just got shiny a few minutes ago, but it's kind of calling out to me in a weird kind of way. There's someone on it. They're walking up to the window. That's never happened before. It's my mom. Mommy's out there. It's really her. I'm going out there now. I'm sorry I can't write anymore. She's knocking on the glass. I'll write more tomorrow. I'm so happy. That was the final entry in Toby's diary. We lost him the day after Christmas, back on that snowy night on the ni 1993. He suffered for, f for so long, and the pain of losing him before he even had a chance to really live still brings me tears to this day. He already had epilepsy and, and a pretty severe immune deficiency before he got hit with, with leukemia. He knew he didn't have a chance. Even with all of the pain he suffered through, he was always such a happy kid. My wife, Mandy, had only just come into his life and she loved him like she was her own. There was something about him that just brought joy to anyone who met him. I can't even describe how much it hurt when he passed away. Mandy and I brought a daughter into this world in early 2002. I'm worried I had grown too old to raise another child, and I was still haunted by the loss of my first. But Gracie made me feel young again. She was lucky enough to have been born happy and healthy. It was her that brought me back to life again after I lost my son. She was just she was just as wonderful as her brother, and we made sure she got to know him, though they would never meet. She would even kiss his picture before bed sometimes. I lost my wife to a stroke two years ago. It was sudden and heartbreaking, but we had a good life together. Even through the more trying times, she stood by me when my son's death brought me close to the edge, and I miss her so much. My life had its share of wonderful and terrible times. As I approach my 64th year on this earth, I believe I have a little time left myself. I got diagnosed with stage 3 lung cancer a year or so before I lost my wife. It's been a downhill battle for the last year, but I've come to peace with it. I had to bury two wives and the son I adore with my, with my whole heart. I think I'm ready for whatever lies ahead. My wonderful daughter has been attending college for the last two years, but she is currently flying out this way. Unfortunately, I do not believe I'll be around to see her just one last time. For the last year, a bridge has stood outside a window of my hospital room. I had always believed it was, a, it was just a fantastical tale created by my son's incredible imagination, but I know what it means now. As I sit here staring out the window, I can see three figures in the distance walking along the bridge towards me. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm leaving Gracie a note to apologize to her for not being there to see her again. 
I know she has a wonderful life ahead of her. My only regret is that I will not be able to watch her become that incredible woman. I know she will be. I'll ask her to upload these final words to serve as a message for my beloved Toby. Should you ever see a bridge outside your window, don't be afraid. Nothing ever ends. Not really. That's it. That was more story. That was more sad than a horror story, but it's on creepypasta.com, so Well Yeah, Creepypasta probably doesn't have just horror stories though. Yeah. I didn't know that. I just looked up popular like like stories, so yeah, but that was sad. <laughs> I I grew I actually grew teary when reading it. Right? Creepy yeah. pasta means copy paste. It can be any kind of story. Ah. Anyway, hatchet, you're saying? Um. Uh, there goes my train of thought. Uh, right. I did really like it. It's just a part of my brain is mm -hmm. like... I, I think it's really nice the way that it ended. But a part of me also... Uh, like... I don't know. I... I I, I have this odd thought of like what do you what do you have to say? Um basic, basically I'm trying to rationalize the fact that I was expecting horror. And instead, now I just feel depressed. Oh, I know why I was put in into the horror category when I was looking up horror stories. Is it because ghosts? No, because it, it has the tags beings and entities and strange and unexplained. Uh. That's why I was in the horror story area. Because it, it had those tags. But yeah, it also has the tags feels, pastas, and happy endings. Yeah, then I guess it wasn't entirely trying to go for proper horror. But yeah, it was a good story. It was a good story. I liked it. Yeah. But, like, my brain was, like, in this place of, like, I was feeling like it was just going to end with the last entry from the diary. Yeah. Like that would still be, like, like if it ended with the last entry from the diary, it still would have been like really good. Yeah. Oh yeah, like that's the thing. Like it, it would have been really good, but it's like a part of me. I was expecting something super grim, but it ended off with a happier note. Mm hmm. So I'm trying to understand the emotions that are welling up because of that. Yeah, that's uh, fair. And I don't know if they're, like, positive or negative. They're just there. Yeah. Possibly both. Yeah. <sighs> that was heavy. Oh, boy. I decided to hit random story that it, it is a horror story. But the story it gives me that's random is 5 out of 10 in the rating. Oh no. Oh no. It's only 5 minutes, but I'm going to let Hatchet go first. Yeah, so this, uh, the stream chat chose uh, Mask of the Red Death. Okay. At least I think that's what won. I'm pretty sure. Nice bookworm. Sure I, think book, I think book did the yeah, yeah, book said, yeah. yeah. I think book did the sen standard thing where uh they oh 
God, it's my brain. Put 69 votes onto the losing option and then tried to get it to so that the percentages were 40 and 20 or something like that. I don't know. Oh, there, the book one got it. 69% for Red Death and 69 votes for a Raven. Oh, okay. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, okay. Also, Hatchet, when you put the Red Death as a name or something, the first thing that came in my head was 035 Poor. 035 Poor? The Blood Red Lake. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not quite that. And come to think of it, this story is fitting considering the wonderful anniversary that happened just a couple days ago. Oh, God. As before you do, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be back. Uh, oh, okay. You can entertain the stream while I'm gone. Are you not entertained? Festus, what do you have to say about the works of Edgar Allan Poe? He's just looking at me. Book says no, am a little sad from the previous story. Ah. This is... Who's my favorite book? This is such a big cat. He's probably the second or third biggest house cat I've ever seen. He is a beefy boy. He is swole. And I'm just rambling with no responses. You are talking about your kitty who is the best at Festus? True. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Book says he thick. No, he is not thick. Well, kinda. It's, it's okay. Very... Cats, cats can have chunk. They're they're not humans. Well, humans well, you... have chunk too. I have chunk. Well, humans can have chunk. <laughs> I have That's chunk. What I just said after correcting myself. <laughs> oh, okay. I I missed that part. That's I was about okay. to say Discord. Discord <laughs> something. Am I not human? I'm a snake. Must must I be a cat to have all this chunk? I am chunk and I am snake. Damn. Oh, then wouldn't that make you more of a gaboon viper than a sea snake? The, the, the funniest thing is... I So, I'm a dragon, but I have no chunk. It's okay for dragons to not have chunk. Some dragons were basically just uh, legged noodles. <laughs> I feel like I would, if I was to like make a proper Sona, I'd probably go with either a magpie or a raven. So I guess that is fitting for me. Hmm. Festus, what's your first <laughs> Kind of fitting that you were trying to choose the raven, then. Yeah. Well, like, well, one of your options, sorry. Blech. Yeah, one of them. Well, I mean, not gonna lie, I did put, like, one vote into the raven. I'm not sure if it's ravens or crows that prefer animals over people. Um, I feel like it's very individual. Like, there's there's a lot of stories about crows getting really 
well along with humans, same with ravens. But if I had to guess, oh, I, those, I guess ravens are more acute. Those like, more uh, depend, those are cases of getting close to individual people, not true, like yeah. all people. Yeah, true. Then I'd be willing to guess ravens. I know that ravens have like really interesting symbiosis with wolves up in northern Europe. Well, also, there's interesting things where ravens can, some ravens can speak. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Like God's, I, God's there, corvids are cool. There's one uh, that. Crows are actually also smart enough to speak. I don't know if they're still alive, but there was one in uh, our uh, our um, well, fuck in our um, zoo that could speak. Damn. Yeah, crows are like, if I'm not mistaken, crows are like the main species of corvid that we have like intelligence studies done on. I still love, like... Oh, magpies is a type of crow. Yeah, magpies are corvids. They're just really pretty ones. They're the flamboyant... They're the flamboyant crows. Magpies are the crow's gay uncle. You say that, but crows, uh, I believe... Their feathers are the ones that shimmer rainbow. True. All right, I'm back. I, I consider a bird that's black that shimmers rainbow a little more gay than magpies that oh, do not okay. shimmer rainbow. Anyway, yeah. I I forgot one thing I wanted to say on stream today. Um, right. um I found out uh, some interesting Pokemon lore. Uh, Jesse from Team Rocket. Uh, I'm pretty sure Hatchet knows who they are. Um, they were actually going to be a nurse Troy, but the teacher at the academy didn't like her because she wasn't a chancy, so she wouldn't allow Jesse to graduate. And that's canon. Damn. And that's why she became part of Team Rocket. So, the education system mm -hmm. got fucked up by one dickhead professor. And now we have one of the most iconic antagonist characters in the series. Yep. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it? Uh, book Damn. says, wait, wasn't a Chansey or didn't have a Chansey? No, she wasn't a Chansey. That's what it was. Because everyone what? else in the class was a Chansey. She was the only human. What? Wait. <laughs> okay, that's uh, 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 I think your brain's being forced to bleed. Ow. <laughs> yeah, and that's also why Jesse has so much information on uh Pokemon. It's because she tried to be a nurse Troy. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It was actually an episode. And they actually showed the, the, the teacher being abusive. <laughs> Damn. I forgot so, what series, but it happened. Sorry, but this establishment is only open to chances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, James also from a rich family. That is true, and was f forced to be put in an arranged marriage. An arranged yes. marriage with a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> and James, also best girl. Yep. <laughs> yeah. James is awesome. I haven't watched any of the Pokemon series, but I've I've seen a lot of stuff about James. Oh yeah, I forgot the girl that was supposed to be forced to marry a uh, James does look a lot like Jesse, but it's not Jesse. Uh, but anyways, Hatch, are you ready to do your story? 
I just thought to bring up that Pokemon more because that was really fucked up. That was put in a kid's cartoon. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's well, not the most fucked up thing. True. Pokemon okay. more for the Pokemon themselves is more fucked up. Fair. <laughs> Constant G word. <laughs> okay, funny. Okay. okay, before I continue. True book. Yeah, not as fucked up as the kid snatch or murder. <laughs> um. Before I continue, mm -hmm. I just wanted to put a little cap off on uh, the discussion we were having about Corvids. Yeah. People need to be more like pros. There was a study that I heard about mm -hmm. where uh, the uh, the scientists had or wanted to study the intelligence and problem solving capabilities of crows. So what they did was they had uh, two crows. Uh, if I remember correctly, they had one crow that wasn't a part of this group of two crows. Uh, wait, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I remember. Basically, both crows were put into separate boxes where they could see each other. Oh. And both crows were given uh, two paper clips. One was bent and one was straight. And uh, their chambers had a beer bottle of some kind or like a bottle of some kind, with a bit of meat in it. And basically the crows had to figure out how to get the meat out of the bottles, and the only way they could manage that with the two paper clips was the straight paper clip. So both crows figure that out. Then the scientists decided to uh, test what would happen if the two crows were put to the same task, but they had to share one uh, one straight paper clip and one bent paper clip. The crows, uh, the crow that was initially given the straight paper clip, went over and helped the other crow straighten out their bent paper clip so that they could both get food from their respective containers. Damn. Without direct, like, with without the complex-ass, like, weird human language that we have, these crows managed, like, these crows from two completely different families, because that's another part. Crows have, like, very intricate uh, familial structures and, like, flock structures. Like, completely different uh, groupings. These crows were brought together, and then they just decided to work together. Mm. Because crow saw other crow need help, so crow helped crow. Humans need to be more like crows. Yeah, and it's actually something I also want to know about, uh, uh, say more about crows, is I know how they got the the name uh like the group called being murder because it, yeah. it says like they uh follow soldiers into battle and when and when people were die they would go after the corpses as far as i remember them talk oh yeah talk about it yeah and that's yeah really fucked they 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 i mean they're smart if, if they have a chance to get a good meal they're gonna take it <laughs> yeah I was like, well, goddamn. <laughs> Book said didn't know that. Yeah, like, uh, um, corvids in general, but especially crows, are some of the most socially complex uh, animals that we know of. Mm -hmm. Like, crows have, like, entire little settlements of flocks that move around constantly. Uh, it's even been demonstrated that crows have their own little crow language to communicate with each other. There's literal regional accents within said crow language. Hmm. It's really cool. Would British crows be able to communicate with American crows? I imagine <laughs> it might be difficult. Yeah. It might be like, okay. It might be like, um... If 
we were if Brit if British people were to be speaking mm -hmm. old English, like the old old English, yeah. to an American. I feel like it'd be more like if someone was speaking uh, Latin to a Polish person. <laughs> Anyways, Nancy, you ready to do your story? I simply wish to share that. Give me a second. Alright. <laughs> We're gonna so after humans go extinct from fucking up the planet. Crows and other corvids will rule the air, and dolphins will rule the oceans. Exactly. Specifically the orcas. Oh, yeah, the orcas, orcas are... They... They're motherfuckers. Yeah, orcas are awesome. We stand the orcas. This, Wait. This, this stream is a pro-orca oh, stream. I got, uh... I recently got a uh, ace orca, like oh. um, an ace orca, like what is it called? Uh, ace orca um, sticker. There you go. Uh, oh, sweet. Hatchet. I'm gonna say this. I don't know why, but I confused uh, orcas with killer whales, and that's why I said they're motherfuckers. <laughs> so orcas are killer, are killer whales. whales. Oh, they are. They are killer whales. I'm. Oh. I only I... hear them as called as killer whales. They're called I... killer whales because when you piss them off, they will never forgive and they will never forget. They'll hunt your shit down. I think I hurt Hatchet again. I think your stupid hurt Hatchet. I got... <laughs> Look guys, I'm sorry in my semantics. I mixed... I fucking mixed beagles up with dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's right right now. My bad. I'm I'm sorry. It just feels like that it, it's similar to that one time when I mixed up Fenix with foxes. Oh my god, shut up. <laughs> but what We're about gonna, this is gonna clip this. Uh, uh, anyway, I can't read your story. Uh, just, just let Hatchet have this this <laughs> moment to soak in how stupid you can be. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm sorry I said tarantula when I meant spider. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, so, sorry I said cobra when I meant snake. Shut the fuck up. Uh, my head. I, I think Hatch would keep going, it's funny. No. Yes. Sorry I said ferret when I meant weasel. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, I actually had a ferret as a pet. Uh, they don't make good pets. They make incredible pets, but you've got to know how to take care of them. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I took care of them nicely. Did no you have else. more than one ferret? No, I wanted to, you need but... more than that's, one ferret. That's, that's a large part creatures. of the issue. Like, yeah. Like, if... Like, they need a companion... At yeah, least there, one other one of them. There's some animals that need a companion. You can't just get one. Yeah, like they if are you so get a mouse, you need to get other mice. If you get a rat, you need to get other rats. Yeah, uh, I they really liked me because I was always kind of let that hold them, played with them and everything. But um, my siblings would put them in a ball, close it, and duct tape it so they can't get out. And roll it towards the dogs. That's called animal abuse. I would hate them too. So they would so, get pissy. Um, so your issue was they hated the dick faces but liked you. Yeah, that's that's what happens. Yeah. So um, so I've got a I got a good question. You know, we 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 on this stream do not encourage or yeah. condone any acts of whatever uh, rights of. Of violence, but um, 
Um, and and we of course would not condone doxing, but um, right? Do you have like a general area where I could find your siblings? No. <laughs> Damn. Is your one sibling still in jail? I think so. Hmm. Oh my. How how difficult do you think it would be to send a box of dog shit <laughs> to your brother in jail? I don't think they would allow that in there. How difficult would it be to launch a pile of dog shit at your brother in jail? You would probably be shot. Now I'll risk it. <laughs> anyway, uh, now that let's let's move a bit past ferret abuse. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably not too difficult. Just hide it pretty well. I've seen it in movies. <laughs> Just hide the box of shit up your ass. You'll be fine. Hide the box of shit inside a box of shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, to 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 the reading. Uh, I think it's pronounced mask. The the title is uh, the M A S Q U E of the Red Death. I believe it's mask. It's just like an old way of saying mask. Yeah, it's, pro yeah, it's pronounced mask is probably a uh, old way of writing it. Probably uh, from Britain. Yeah. Good thing we have the expert here, is Adurna. What? How am I? Uh? <laughs> you were always the one correcting us with languages and stuff. I, I guess. Well, like only like two, well, or no three. Yeah, because I do, because I do correct for Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Jerry does. I think Jerry does a little bit more for that on that one because I. Yeah. I have a problem rolling with my R's and stuff. Yeah. Well, it, so it's a little... Fun fact: I always used to roll my R's automatically until. When I was in, like, sixth grade, I believe, and the teachers were trying to find yet another reason to blame for my uh, writing issues. And so they went through the alphabet bit by bit, and they're like, you're not pronouncing the R right. And so that was literally the only pronunciation that wasn't absolutely perfect to them. So if you roll your R's like someone who is Spanish or Mexican, just naturally like I did, then they will immediately blame it as the reason for your learning issues, not them being dipshits, and they will just shut down on you until you do it the American way. Yeah. That is... It's racist! I, 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 I want to hope that we've gotten better since then, but I also have doubts. it's just like that is no, one of the most bizarre, like, mixtures of ableism and racism yeah. at the same time. Yeah, I, I experienced the exact same when I took Spanish well, like, and German. Also, so, 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 one, one thing about, um, like, my, my experience with, like, R's and stuff, the reason, okay, the reason why probably one of the reasons why it's so hard for me to roll my R's is because um, I think I pretty, I had a, like a, uh, actually no, I'm pretty sure like I've, I have like a um, vocal disability or some, some sort or something because I had to like do like a speaking therapy for my entire elementary school years so like and i was focusing mainly on my r's and my i guess my s's mm. yeah so a quick question 
How long were you planning stream to go, Bray? I can go till three. Because I have to stream longer because of the bullshit. Right, yeah. yeah. Also, um, before we continue on Hatch's thing, uh, for my written portion of my German exam, I passed, and I only wrote one sentence. I'm going to butcher saying this, but Ich muss in, in Badenzimmer gehen. It means I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and that's all I wrote. Also. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. I might just end it after Hatchet's story because I forgot. I have, 10. I have to get up at 10. Oh, yeah, for the streamer thing? Yeah, fuck. Okay, I definitely want to do another horror story stream. And probably do it Thursday, and I'm thinking I'm gonna either do cards or our uh Gartic phone Wednesday. I I'm not sure which though. I was, I was gonna I make mean... a joke that you I was gonna make a joke that you would be fine with four hours of sleep. No. No no, actually no, it would probably like be Closer to six, actually. But, uh... Blah, 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 blah. Brain, brain, brain. Uh... I mean, we could basically just, like, do the standard of, like... Have Gartic Phone set, and then whenever we get bored with the Gartic Phone, move over the cards. There. Mm -hmm. I wonder. I wonder if we will end up continuing the story of the oil bear. Oh my God! But anyway, wait. Didn't we like finish the story mostly? Oh yeah, no. We just needed to do the backstory. Well, yeah. Like we created a whole last like uh, chronicle about his his story. Yeah, we made the chronicle about his death, but now we well, need to make a chronicle about. <laughs> oh, no. We we did a significant portion that was like about his overall life. Mm -hmm. But yeah. what is the bright type? Don't worry about it. Garlic phone, the phone to keep all vampires away, or people who are allergic to garlic, or people with noses. <laughs> For people who don't like crying. Yeah, um... Kind of thinking, is, being... Isn't garlic in the same family as onions? Yeah, probably. Wait, what were you trying to say, Bright? Wait, yeah. I watched a YouTuber today, yeah. Garlic is in the same family as onions. As well. They are. Interesting. Yeah, they are. Because they they have very good for you. Yeah, because they had a they have a an allergy to the family that onions and garlic are in. So that's how I know. Ah. Uh, so yeah. Bad garlic bread is good. Uh, book says yeah they're part of the Allium genus. They very close. Garlic and onions are butt buddies. <laughs> that's oh, canon no. now that's gonna be oh, our nicknames no. garlic and onion <laughs> well i guess that's oh, the question no. who's garlic and who's onion uh hatch you know what garlic, i think bright is onion i think bright is the garlic because if you mess with garlic wrong it burns it like makes your fingers stick together like glue it burns your eyes it burns everything, at least with, like, with onions, though, if you do everything right, then nothing hurts you. Mm. With garlic, you can always get hurt. Plus, I'm willing to guess I am significantly rounder than bright and larger. Like, we know that I'm larger than bright, so yeah, I am onion bright as garlic. 
and Bookworm is bringing up that Aderna is fitting into the stereotypes of what uh, ace people like. Yeah. I like how we've yeah. been delaying hatchets at saying their uh, <laughs> story. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are we ready? It's called ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. We these three, like, like that's the thing. Uh, story, like, horror story streams, and editing streams. Those can both basically just be have like the secondary title of like garbled ADHD rambling. There. No, oh, yeah. no, it's, instead of ADHD ramble, just ADHD brain go burr. True. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Okay. I shall begin. The Mask of the Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe. The Red Death had long devastated the country. My Xbox just alerted me to something and it severely distracted me. Turn on console. Fuck. There. The Red Death had long devastated the country. No pestilence had ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar, and its seal, the redness and horror of blood. There were sharp pains and sudden dizziness, and then profuse bleeding at the pores with disillusion. The scarlet stains upon the body and especially upon the face of the victim were the pest band test band which shut him out from the aid and from the sympathy of his fellow man. And the whole seizure, progress and termination of disease were the incidents of half an hour. But the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and sagacious when his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned to his presence a thousand hale and light-hearted friends from among the kingdoms and dames of his court, and with these retired to the deep seclusion of one of his castellated abbeys. Cast castellated abbeys. Castled. No, it's, it's like castle-ated. Like, it's oh, castle -ated. A -T -E -D. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Old stories! <laughs> Weird language! Anyway. Yeah, I, I had heard uh, Castle did. So that's. Yeah. I thought <laughs> you were like having trouble with it, so I was like, yeah. oh. Right. <laughs> Book says, wait, Xbox? Red Death? Red Ring? Oh, shit. Fuck, this is sick. No, this is not an original X or this is not an original Xbox 360. Anyway, <laughs> castellated abbeys. This was an extensive and magnificent structure, the creation of the prince's own eccentric yet august taste. A strong and lofty wall girdled it in. Gir girdled it in. This wall had gates of iron. The, the courtiers, courtiers, having, having entered, brought furnaces and massy, massy hammers and wielded the bolts, welded the bolts. They resolved to leave means neither of ingress or e egress to the sudden impulses of despair and friend despair or frenzy from within the ab the abbey was amply pro amp 
amply provisioned. With such, I forgot how hard it can be to read some of these stories. If you want, I can read it for you. No, nah, it's it's good. Okay. With such precautions, the courtiers might bid defiance to contagion. The external world would take care of itself. In the meantime, it was folly to grieve. Or to think. The prince had provided all the appliances of pleasure. There were buffoons, there were improvis improv improvisatory. There were ballet dancers, there were musicians, there was beauty, there was wine, all these and all these and security were within. Without was the red bell. It was toward the close of the fifth or sixth month of this seclusion. Fifth or sixth month of his seclusion, and while the pestilence raged most furiously abroad, the prince Prospero, Prospero entertained his thousand friends at a masked ball of the most unusual magnificence. It was a voluptuous scene, that masked ball. But first, let me tell you of the rooms in which it was held. There were seven, an imperial suite. In many palaces, however, such suites, suites form a long and straight vista, while the folding doors slide back nearly to the walls on either hand so that the view of the whole extent is scarcely impeded. Here, the case was very different, as might have been expected from the Duke's love of the bazaar. The apartments were so irregularly dis disposed that the vision embraced but little more than one at a time. There was a sharp turn at every twenty or thirty yards, and at each turn a novel effect to the right and left, to the right and left, in the middle of each wall, a tall, narrow Gothic window looked out upon a closed corridor which pursued the windings of the suite. These windows were of stained glass whose color varied in accordance with the prevailing hue of the decorations of the chamber into which it opened. That on the eastern extremity was hung, for example, in blue, and vivid, and vividly blue were its windows. The second chamber was purple in its ornaments and tapestries, and were the panes, and here the panes were purple. The third was green throughout, and so were the casements. The fourth, the fourth was furnished with light, lighted, furnished and lighted with orange. The fifth with white. The sixth. With violet, the seventh apartment was closely shrouded in black velvet tapestries that hung all over the ceiling and down the walls, falling in heavy folds upon a carpet of the same material and hue. But in this chamber only, the color of the windows failed to correspond with the decoration. The panes were scarlet, a deep blood color. Now, in no one of the seven apartments was there any lamp or candelabrum. Amid the profusion of golden ornaments that lay scattered to and fro or depended, depended from the roof, there was no light of any kind emanating from, from lamp or candle within the suite of chambers. But in the corridors that followed the suite, there stood opposite to each window a heavy tripod, bearing a brazier of fire that protected its ray that protected its rays through the tinted glass, and so glaringly illuminated the room. Thus, and thus were produced 
a multitude of gaudy and fantastic appearances. But in the western or black chamber, the effect of the firelight that streamed upon the dark hangings through the blood-tinted wood panes was ghastly in the extreme, and produced so wild a look upon the countenances of those who entered that there were few of the company bold enough to set foot within its precincts at all. It was in this apartment, also, that there stood against the western wall a gigantic clock of ebony. Its pendulum swung to and fro with dull, heavy, monotonous clang, and when the minute hand made the circuit of the face and the hour was to be stricken, there came from the brazen lungs of the clock a sound which was clear and loud and deep and exceedingly musical but of so peculiar a note and emphasis that at each lapse of an hour, the musicians of the orchestra were constrained to were constrained to pause momentarily in their performance, to hearken to the sound, and thus the waltzer's performance ceased, their evolutions, and there was a brief disconcert of the whole gay company Gay. Gods, my intrusive thoughts really fucked me up there that time. A brief dis disconcert of the whole gay company, and while the chimes of the clock yet rang, it was observed that the giddiest <sighs> that the giddiest grew pale, and the more aged and sedate passed their hands over their brows as if in confused reverie or meditation. But when the echoes had fully ceased, a light laughter at once prevailed the assembly. Musicians looked at each other and smiled as if at their own nervousness and folly, and made whispering vows each to the other that the next chiming of the clock should produce in them no similar motion. And then after the lapse of 60 minutes, which embraced 3,600 seconds of the time, there came yet another chiming of the clock. And then were the same disconcert and tumultuous and meditation as before. But in spite of these things, it was a gay and magnificent revel. <laughs> God damn. God. <laughs> Gods, I'm so broken. But in spite of these things, it was a gay and magnificent rebel. The tastes of the Duke were peculiar. He had a fine eye for colors and effects. He disregarded the decora of, of mere fashion. His plans were bold and fiery, and his conceptuations, uh, conceptions glowed with barbaric luster. There are some who would have thought him mad. His followers fe felt that he was not. It was necessary to hear and see and touch him to be sure that he was not. He had directed, in great part, the movable embellishments of the seven chambers upon occasion of this great feat, and it was his own guiding taste which had given chain, given character to the masquerades. Be sure they were grotesque. There were, there were much glare and glitter, piquancy and phantasm, much of which has not been seen in Hernani, or not there are, are there are arabesque are, are, arabesque yeah arabesque figures with unsuited limbs and appointments there were delirious fancies such as the madman such as the madman fashions there was much of the beautiful 
much of the wanton, much of the bizarre, something of the terrible, and not a little of what which might have excited disgust. To and fro in the seven chambers, there stalked, in fact, a multitude of dreams, and these, the dreams, writhed in and about taking hue from the rooms and causing the wild music of the orchestra to seem as the echo of their steps. And, anon, the sh there strikes the ebony clock which stands in the hall of the bed. And there, for a moment, all is still, all is silent save the voice of the clock. The dreams are still frozen as they stand, the echoes of the chime die away. They were endured but an instant, and a light, half-subdued laughter floats after them as they depart. And now again, the music swells and the dreams live and writhe to and fro more merrily than ever, taking hue from the main, from the many tinted windows through which stream the rays from the tripod. But to the chamber which lies most westwardly of the seven, there are now none of the maskers who venture, for the night is waning away. For the night is waning away, and there flows a ruddier light, the blood colored panes and the blackness of the sable drapery halls. And to him whose foot falls upon the sable carpet, there comes from the near there comes from the near clock of ebony a muffled peal, more solemnly emphatic, solemnly emphatic than any which reaches their ears who indulge in the more remote gaieties of the other apartments. But these other apartments were densely crowded, and in them beat feverishly the heart of life, and the revel went whirling on, until at length there commenced the sounding of the midnight upon the clock. And then the music ceased, as I have told. The evolutions of the waltzers were quieted, and there was an uneasy sensation of all things as before. But now, there were twelve strokes to be sounded by the bell of the clock, and thus it happened, perhaps, the more, the more of thought crept, with more of time into the meditations of the thoughtful among those who revel. And thus, too, it happened, perhaps, that before the last echoes of the last chime had utterly sunk into silence, there were many individuals in the crowd who had found leisure to become aware of the presence of a masked figure, which had arrested the attention of no single individual before. And the rumor of this new presence, having spread itself whisperingly around, there arose at length from the whole company a buzz or murmur expressive of disappropriation, dis, dis, disapprobation, disapprobation, expressive of disapprobation and surprise, then finally of terror, of horror, and of disgust. In, in an assumably in an assembly of phantasms such as I have painted, it may well be supposed that no ordinary appearance could have excited such sensation. In truth, the masquerade license of the night was nearly unlimited, but the figure in question had an out hero hero. Herited Herod. Out Herited Herod. 
and gone beyond the bounds of even the prince's indif indefinite, indefinite decorum. There are chords in the hearts of the most. There are chords in the hearts of the most reckless, which cannot be touched without an, without emotion. Even with the utterly lost, to whom life and death are equally jests, there are matters of which no jest can be made. The whole company, indeed, seemed now deeply to feel that in the costume and bearing of the stranger neither wit no, nor propriety existed. The figure was tall and gaunt and shrouded from head to foot in habiliments of the grave, habiliments of the grave. The mask was concealed. The mask which concealed the visage was made so nearly to resemble the countenance of, of a stiffened corpse that the closest scrutiny must have had difficulty in detecting the cheat. And yet all this might have been endured, if not approved, by the mad revelers around. But the mummy had gone so far as to assume the type of the Red Death. His vesture was dabbled in blood, and his broad brow and all the features of the face were besprinkled with the scarlet horror. When the eyes of Prince Prospero fell upon this spectral image, which with a slowly and solemn moment, as if more fully of sustain, as if more fully to sustain its role, stalked to and fro among the waltzers. He was seen to be con convulsed in the first moment with a strong shudder, either of terror or distaste, but in the next his brow reddened with rage. Who dares? he demanded hoarsely courtesers who stood near him. Who dares insult us with this blasphemous mockery? Seize, it, seize him and unmask him, that we may know who we have to hang at sunrise from the battlements. It was in the eastern of the blue chamber in which stood the Prince Prospero. As he uttered these words, they rang throughout the seven rooms loudly and clearly for the prince was a bold and robust man, and the music had become hushed as the weaving as the waving of his hand. It was in the blue room, and where stood the prince, with a group of pale courtesans by his side. At first, as he spoke, there was a slight rustling movement of this group in the direction of the intruder, who at the moment was also hanged. And now, with deliberate and stately step, made closer approach to the speaker. But from a certain nameless awe, with which the mad assumptions of the mummer had inspired the whole party, there were found none who put forth hands to seize, so that, unimpeded, he passed within a yard of the prince's person. And with that vast, I lost my place because my hair flew in my face. But I'm unimpeded. Okay. Within a yard of the prince's person, and while the vast assembly, and while the vast assembly, as if with on impulse, shrank from the centers of the room to the walls. He made his distinct he made his way uninterruptedly, but with the same solemn and measured step which had distinguished him from the first, for the blue chamber to the purple through the through the purple to the green, through the green to the orange, through this again to the white, and even thence to the violent, ere a decided decided movement had been made to arrest him. It was then, however, that the prince 
Prospero, maddening with rage and the shame of his own momentary cowardice, rushed hurriedly through the six chambers while none followed him, on account of a deadly terror that had seized upon him. He bore aloft a drawn dagger and had a and had approached in rapid imp impetuosity to within three or four feet of the retreating figure, when the latter, having attained the extremity of having attained the extremity of the velvet apartment, turned suddenly and confronted his pursuer. There was a sharp cry and the dagger dropped, gleaming upon the sable carpet, upon which instantly afterwards fell prostrate in death the Prince Prospero. Then, summoning the wild courage of despair, a throng of the revelers at once threw themselves into the black apartment, and seizing the monk, whose tall figure stood erect and motionless within the shadow of the ebony clock, gazed in unutterable horror in finding the grave ceramics and corpse-like mask which they handled was no vile was handled with so violent a rudeness untenanted by any tangible form mask which they handled with so violent a rudeness, untenanted by any tangible form. And now was acknowledged the presence of the Red Death. He had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped the revelers in the blood bedowed, <laughs> in the blood bedewed halls of their revel, and died each and died each in the dis despairing posture of his fall. And the life of the ebony clock went out, and that of the last of the gang. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm sorry. That of the last of the gang. And the flames of the tripod of the tripods expired, and darkness and decay, the red death, held illuminate domination of all. God damn it, Festus. That is that is the end. It ended with Festus stepping on my computer like a man. <laughs> Festus said, "Fuck the Red Death." Yeah. So to recap, uh, there's a lot of gay. Yeah. So to recap, horrible, deathly illness uh, is going around the country. the uh, The nobles hole up in this super fancy, uh, big old palace and have a masquerade, and then the disease comes for them. That's the story. I like it. But also, I forgot that one of the last lines in the story is, and the life of the ebony clock went out with that of the last of the gay. Oh. So I think the Red Death just committed a hate crime as well. Damn. See. And the nobles are having a COVID part, I mean, a red death party. Mm -hmm. Not too far off. <laughs> uh, it had been forever since I read that story. Oh, speaking of uh, the red death party and the COVID part thing, uh, thing <laughs> um, there was a person who did a gender reveal. But instead of oh, doing, God. like, balloons or stuff like that, uh, they put C4s in cakes. 
and had them explode with the glitter of oh. either blue or pink. Oh, that's different from what I was expecting. I was expecting you to talk about the plane incident. Uh, several people got put in the hospital. No one died. Oh. Damn. Yeah, there was recently a gender reveal party video that went viral because, uh, it was like a relatively, I think a relatively wealthy family down in Mexico. Yeah. And they had someone get into this old dinky plane and like crop dust with the color of, of the gender reveal. Uh, but the plane's wing folded in on it and the plane crashed and the, and, and the pilot died. Oh. Uh, but for like the injuries that were reported, they said it was glitter related injuries. Not C4 related. Glitter related injuries. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I remember back during the great glitter wars of 2023. Do you want to end off now, or do you yeah. want me to? Because I was thinking, I like, I do have. I'm trying to think. Uh, the Raven isn't wouldn't take that long, but man. I think I'm gonna end it off now. That's fair. Do we want? To I don't know. We could if we want. I mean, I'm gonna do my last words as the laughing and bright love story. Oh no. I'm gonna read it. Okay. Uh, I guess bookworm prepare last words. Yeah. Uh, what what should my prompt as old man be? Nevermore. That's way too that's just that's at best a concept raven okay i could i could i could i could work we're just ravens and crows oh wait book said yep but first i'm going to use the tangia meme oh, yeah because okay. alerts are activated on this scene okay that's the tangia meme <laughs> I cry meme. Aww. Probably because the board was disappointed they couldn't use alerts. Uh. Right, why did you just put an equal sign? In Twitch chat? Don't worry about it. I am worrying about it. Why did you do that? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just eat. <laughs> so, Hatch, about that person you were talking, you you were asking about, and uh, I think Pachio's server. Oh yeah. Uh, um, if I remember correctly, they're racist. The race is kind of vegan. That doesn't surprise me. Mm. Yeah. It's for, yeah. For for context, everyone. Uh, basically, earlier today, I was having a pleasant discussion about uh, ethical animal consumption and kind of like I'm a very vegan sympathetic person, so I was coming from that perspective and talking with someone who has dietary requirements that make so that they just could not be vegan. We yeah. were just having a nice little chat, and then uh, some random fuckface came in and started immediately uh, going the standard PETA route of conversation. So the vegan teacher. Oh, no. Okay, no, 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 yeah. no. This person's funnier than the vegan teacher. So I was actually... I actually had run-ins with this person. Oh, you have? <laughs> Uh huh. Oh no. They they were saying that like every, they were trying to paint paint like so they were saying like uh pretty much every animal 
was it person? Oh yeah, that's, that's like that's which I'm like I'm I'm fine with that as a, as a concept, but like then I was like I brought up trees and they would not consider that trees are people too. Yes. The thing is, if they said it to me, I'll say, "Oh, cool, animals are furries." What? What? God, this conversation is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the, the funny thing is, like they were just going on <laughs> once. It was hilarious. Yeah, new new can new fan theory, everybody. Uh, all animals are actually humans, but they're furries, and they are <laughs> really dedicated to their to playing their persona. That's oh, what it then, is. And then trees are trees. Wait, does that yeah, mean they... when we eat animals, we're doing cannibalism? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. We're all cannibals. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was just... It, it'd been a very long time since I had a run-in with a proper, what I, what I tend to call a uh, liberal vegan, but in this case it's probably more of the far conservative vegan. Uh, also lovingly described as salad Karens by the click at one point. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I, I like that dubbing of them. Just not an ounce of systemic critique in their entire body. Mm -hmm. Like, proper vegans, like, veganism started within far left spaces, and it, like, largely, like, proper vegans tend to be largely fairly far left, and they tend to uh, engage in very distinct systemic critique. Like, veganism isn't just you're evil for your personal choices because the mentality of boiling systemic issues down to the individual level just perpetuates the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But speaking of vegans, I remember this one restaurant who went to be just a full-on vegan restaurant, losing business badly, so he went back to selling meats and vegan stuff. And the vegans got mad at them for it. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, like they're they're a business. If if they're not, like, <laughs> we we exist in capitalism. If there's not enough vegans for them to run a solely vegan store in their area, then it's either the business dies or they adapt to the fact that there's not enough vegans around eating at their place. And yeah, it wasn't even all that. that case, it uh, was they chose the um, yeah. latter option. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, the only meat options they technically added was eggs and bacon, and that's it. But so only eggs. It just so only bacon was the meat one because uh, yeah. eggs isn't. I know, but the vegans got mad about the eggs thing too. That, oh I, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, because um. Because apparently they don't like vegetarians either, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty common that they... Yeah. And I think Katya put it a good way in a, like, a, a, a different conversation. Like, it's not inherently privileged to be vegan. There are vegan options on most budgets mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. But choice of food is a privilege. There's a lot of people who just don't actually have much of a choice in what they get to eat. Case in point, my ass, who literally doesn't buy any of my own food. Mm -hmm. It's my parents buying my food. Yeah, here's actually another thing I've never talked about. Um, there are actually only a very few vegetables that my stomach doesn't react negatively to. Um... Man. Lettuce, carrots, and celery are the only things I've ever tested. Oh, and jalapenos. I forgot jalapenos. That my stomach doesn't react ne negatively to. Like, I can get real sick if I have any other vegetable. 
uh, jalapenos aren't vegetables. Oh, they're fruit? I forgot about that. Yeah, remember, jalapenos are berries. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Jerry's gonna kill me. But, um, but I can handle fruit just fine, but, but like, vegetables, like, is down the gutter. <laughs> yeah. Like, I want to, at some point in my life, go veggie, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be a challenge. Because, I mean, like, yeah. I, too, like, my IBS flares up something awful when I don't have some amount of meat protein in my diet. So I've got to mm. have the opportunity to figure out a plant-based mm. diet that would work for my gut, and I don't have the means right now. Yeah, the first... Uh... Although, that's 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 a side note. Just, just a quick side note. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that's given me hope for uh, the prospect of becoming veggie is trying the Beyond Burger at Carl's Jr. It's 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 a fully like vegetarian substitute. There's no meat in the thing, and it tastes basically exactly like one of their standard burgers. But there's no meat in it, and it's goddamn witchcraft. They are oh. so good. They're so good, and I shit my guts out after I eat one, but they're so good. Yeah, also, um... Also waiting for that artificial meat, yeah. How I figure out the first time is that I tried eating uh, cucumber, got sick. Tried eating oh. spinach, got sick. Oh. Tr then tried eating green beans, got immediately sick. So it's oh, no. obvious my stomach can't handle every type of veggie. It's just like very select. You just named three of my favorite vegetables. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I love green beans. Spinach is like one of my favorite things to have in salads or in pasta. And uh, well, what was the other one you mentioned? Green. Uh, cucumber. Cucumber. Oh god, I, I like, love cucumber. I like I like spinach. I hate lettuce. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Here's the funny thing, too. Like, Bookworm says, oh, you're just a, a, a thing that you can't for. Actually, if a meat has too much grease, or actually has a, a grease in it, I actually get sick. I have to have limited grease in my meat, or I will get sick. Yeah. So, like, I, the point being, yeah. overall, with the vegan thing, mm -hmm. proper like proper far left vegans tend to take into account the fact that there is nuance in how our individual bodies act and aren't just your evil for participating in the system that is the problem but I'm going to focus on the individual rather than the system because I know how to do this uh like also also like yeah. Then, then there's like the vegans who like attack native cultures and stuff. Oh gods! I, I was, I was like, yeah. If I have them ready to paste in a tanchia, there's a moment. Fair. Okay. Just, I'll, I'll, I'll say this last bit. There, there, every bone in my body. Mm -hmm. I had to use every bone in my body not to bring up what their views would be saying about native populations oh, that God. literally just need meat. Like, uh... Yeah. It's, the, it's that weird situation where you see veganism, a thing that started out far left, just blindly waltzing into colonialism without a thought in the world. Uh, yeah. it's mad. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, go ahead, bookworm. Yeah, go, go ahead. Although I can't. Keep... We can't hear it. Oh uh, yeah. Well, it'll be posting chat. Remember, it's Tangi oh, added yeah. that thing now, which was That's awesome. Good. That's good. When it pops up, I'm probably just gonna oh. press the. Probably gonna make it so I can hear stream. Your far left ideology forgot to integrate your racist parts. Uh, well, that's the thing. I I think it's like it's basically that the idea of veganism left far left circles and got gobbled up 
by people who aren't going to engage in systemic critique, which is why I separate like what I call proper vegans, but left wing vegans from liberal slash conservative vegans. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, now that I think about it, the only food I don't, my body does not act negatively to is comment uh, subscribe and follow bright for more horror oh stories. god damn it maybe more tragic and less scary stories also give bright money if you can so she can experience some relief from the true horror being held to every whim of capitalism <laughs> but like i was saying the only food i don't uh food i don't act negatively to is fruit huh that's good yeah but yeah, actually, a, I think this is the best analogy I can make for, like, how, like, further... Really? Yeah, fruit right? that body reacts negatively to, though? Huh? What was it? If I remember correctly, you said a fruit your body doesn't... Your body not relax, reacts negatively to. I can't remember. Jalapenos. Yeah, jalapenos. So you're good with spicy berries. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I was gonna say the best analogy I can make about like how veganism has been appropriated by like liberal and conservative types. Y'all remember? Y'all know the fact that libertarian was initially a specifically far left ideology. And then there was just a shit ton of right wing asshats that just started using the label and not understanding anything about it. <laughs> that that's how I feel about the vegan stuff. It starts radically progressive and then uh status quo loving dipshits come in and strip it of its core purposes. And then the AMCAP said, fuck you. Yeah. Uh. I think I have... Well, if it we makes you feel to, better, we're there's gonna also... Take, we're going to try and take anarchism. If it makes you feel any better, there would be... Damn veganism. But also are so extreme about it. They stand against people who... Uh, eat meat as part of traditional foods oh, from yeah. their culture. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's, oh, that's... dare you make beans with pork fat? Like, that is... Oh, yeah. how dare, they have no oh, idea God. how flavorless yeah. beans can be. I've seen that. Like, uh, I, I think I will just pass on doing the old man ramble because this is dragging on. <laughs> that's but, fair. Um, but yeah, that reminds me because, like, I've been watching a lot of uh, stuff from creator named Shaba, who's mm -hmm. the wife of Jamie Dodger, famous trans man. Mm -hmm. uh, and she does oh, a lot of stuff. They're so adorable. Sorry. Yeah, I oh, I love them. But Shaba does a lot of Am I the Asshole posts. And one of the Am I the Asshole things was someone asking, Hey, am I the asshole for going to a potluck and bringing a dish that is tofu but also has meat in it? Because that's just how I've always viewed tofu. It's just an ingredient. It's not inherently a meat substitute. Am I the asshole for bringing that there? And then a bunch of veggie folks there ate it and then freaked out later because they didn't realize a tofu dish might have meat in it? <laughs> and it's just like... Like, uh, no. What? May I, just, may I just say someone has to be very stupid to think of it that way maybe i just didn't grow up in a white enough culture but i've always viewed tofu as just an ingredient like yeah in, in the countries that it's used in it's typically used with meat like, like yeah. even japanese use it in meat dishes mm. like the well, dish that people typically say is super vegetarian no it has fish flakes <laughs> I like, forget what that yeah. fish, the dish is called. It has fish flakes, it has miso paste, it has 
seaweed and tofu and typically some other thing. Yeah. Hmm. It, so sorry. it's pescatarian, not vegetarian. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, oh, uh, it's like, oh, oh, God. And obviously Shaba was rational about it and said <laughs> basically something to the tune of, um, if you have dietary requirements, you're the one who's responsible for keeping in mind said dietary requirements. When you're at a potluck where nothing's properly labeled, mm -hmm. like, if anything, like, she said, like, if anything, the biggest issue comes from the host not, like, properly labeling things and having, like, okay, this section is for only veggie foods. This section is for non-veggie foods, that sort of thing. Like, if you're going to have a diverse range of dietary requirements in your guest to a potluck, that seems like it would be a pretty logical thing to do. Oh, yeah. But it's just, like, they didn't do that, and then a bunch of these veggie folks who didn't bother to inquire as to whether or not there might be meat in the tofu dish that's, like, a traditional dish, they, they just get really, really pissed at the poster because the poster didn't feel the need to inform them that tofu didn't start as a meat substitute. Actually, you know how amazing tofu can be with uh, meat-like ingredients or non-vegan ingredients, rather? I mean, yeah, I would imagine it's really good. I've never there actually was, had tofu. There used to be uh, one Vietnamese restaurant in the town I used to live in that was so delicious i only had it one time because by the time i was able to eat spicy stuff again it was gone but man it had fried tofu with the sauce that that included soy sauce and probably a little uh clam uh sauce which is and mm. other things not cl yeah clam i believe and it tasted so amazing, but so spicy. I literally almost destroyed my stomach eating, trying to <laughs> eat it. Because I used to be incredibly sensitive to spicy foods. And it's uh, just like, it tastes so delicious. But, oh, geez, this hurts. It feels like my stomach's being destroyed. But this I ended up giving the food away to a friend because I literally couldn't eat it. Yeah. Like, oh, damn. They... You know, this slice is really good. They managed to make this uh, molten lava taste really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost yeah. that. There goes Yeah, again. basically. Anyway, Jerry, uh, last words, go. It had amazing texture. It had amazing flavor. <laughs> it had sesame seeds. It had heat. It had veggie. It had non-veggie. It was delicious. And it was probably something traditional from its own country. Yeah. I think I'm going to save the, um, the bright and laughy story for tomorrow. Okay. Oh, yeah. That, that, that makes sense. Yeah. More time. Yeah. Uh, like I'm going to return. Yeah. Adurna, last words go. Um. Right, there's a cat cowbird. Oh, god damn it. Anyways, hatchet, last words go. I shall now do a, a, my own narrated version of one of those absolutely batshit cracked out things I've been doing in Twitch chat. Oh no. And remember, kids, if you smell a bee, don't forget to bite the coin. But the coins are not made out of plants, so be sure to eat the plants that the coins are inside of. Also, remember, it's incredibly important to shit on the bed when the bed is made out of cots. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyways, I have two things to say as my final words. Uh, one... I found out that on Tangia, I I read the script, send an audio of me reading the script to Tangia, 
and it'll put me as like an AI interaction thing. Oh no. no. You can have my voice. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> yes. What have you done, Bryce? I haven't done it yet. Oh, don't do it. <laughs> Why not? Because it'll turn evil and try to take over your channel or some shit. <laughs> Anyway, the second thing is, you know how Ace people, uh, really like garlic bread? Yes, it's a very common meme. Yeah, you know how I told you about my very strict diet? Yeah. If I eat more than two slices, I actually do get sick. Oh. I tend to eat that... four slices every time I get it. That's... Uh... <laughs> Wait, it's, too it? it's too delicious. It is too delicious. Just like my brain's in the mode of oh man, that sucks. That that makes me think of this one meme I saw. And and then it just caps off with I don't care about consequences. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, like it's a less extreme example, but I guess I kind of feel the same about Carl's Jr. Beyond Burger. I ate two of them yeah. last time. I the, shit my guts out. The, Did I regret it? Not one goddamn bit. Those well, things are so tasty. The funny thing is, you and me, Hash, I have the same reaction. I I don't vomit like anything else. I shit it out badly. Yeah. I, I guess. Yeah. I'm not. I don't know if that's what you're Probably not. Something. It's just that I'm very limited to what I eat. I can't have very greasy foods. I can't have a lot of vegetables. Fruit's fine. And grains I have to eat in moderation. That's just book says that's just my sibling with their shrimp allergy and lactose intolerance. Well, fuck, it's worth it. <laughs> I can get that, but do be very careful with the shrimp allergy because, like, yeah. lactose intolerance is different from allergies. Like, lactose intolerance is basically just where we started, like a, a few few hundred thousand years ago before humans started to drink milk a lot. Allergies, they can get progressively worse with exposure. Yeah. So you gotta be careful with that. I mean, well, yeah. Like, yeah, they can get to the point where they can like become you potentially too. Yeah. yeah, also with allergies, you can actually lose them. Like, I used to have a that bee can. allergy when I was younger, and I don't have that anymore. Yeah. The, the body is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, a bee allergy or a beet allergy? Bee. Like, if I get bee stings, I, I need to go to the hospital. A bee allergy. Right became anaphylactic any time <laughs> she, she heard a drummer. <laughs> I was actually thinking the fruit, but... I know, I know. <laughs> Just... yeah. uh, bee so, so... But... If that was the case, then we wouldn't be friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a very wait. odd way to be able to commit assassination. Bookrum says, wait, that's a fruit? I thought it was a vegetable. Huh. The beet. Wait, yeah. I don't it... remember. I, I, think, I don't remember. I, I think beets are root vegetables. Is oh, a beet a fruit? fruit? Yeah, they're beets. They're, they're vegetables, sorry. A beet yeah. root is sim or simply beet is a highly nutritious root vegetable. Yeah. F. <laughs> there, hey, Bright, congratulations. Congratulations, Bright. Someone else said something stupid. What if I play what? I'm mocking Bright for constantly saying misinformation. You're wow, good. fuck you. You're good, Adirna. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, like, I know, so yeah, I, I mainly said that again because I don't think Jiri heard when I said it the first time, like, the diet thing. Why so, is your diet restricted? I don't know, It's it's been like that since I was young, That's like, really different. young. It's different guts probably different related folks. to just what your stomach can handle then. Yeah. Although, like the sh like the the reaction of shitting yourself, at the very least from my perspective, does sound like IBS could be a part of it. Irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what I deal with. And yeah. it's like, oh, if, if I don't have certain things in my diet, or mm -hmm. eat too much of something, uh... Then it sounds like Bright needs to be tested for IBS. Yeah, I still find it funny how I can, my body handles peppers just fine, but if I have too much bread, I go to the toilet. <laughs> why do you realize why bread, right? You do realize. Why? Bread is literally baked sugar. Ah. True. Well, I mean, it's not directly sugar, but it's called sugar. Uh, when you bake the things that create the majority of breads, it actually turns into sugar in your stomach. Oh, well, yeah, like car carbohydrates will like turn into a type of sugar in the body. Yeah. yeah. So it naturally is just heavier on the stomach for those who did not come, who do not genetically come from areas that had lots of bread. Oh, yeah. Here's one thing that not, I have never said. Uh, my left and right shoulder, I think, are double jointed. That's disgusting and not and interesting. Because the reason I say that is because when I pull back for a punch, I can bend my shoulder at a ninety degree angle. Ah, that is ah, terrifying punching ah, power. Ah, but also, I said gross because that very thing. People who are double jointed, although they have amazing abilities, it looks gross when they use the double jointed <laughs> Booker's just freaking out in chat. What? Bright has an extra powerful punch from an extra gross ability. Okay, so no, th there's two ways we can interpret <laughs> the less likely way in that. Uh, doing it like that actually creates more force. I have, I, I doubt that it, like, create enough extra force to be very effective. Right. But it is uh, a psychological. It is, it is a cognito hazard because when Bright throws a punch like that, whatever the fuck Bright's fighting is not going to want to fight for much longer. <laughs> yeah. Just all of a sudden, because just, they're just like, gonna have go to way behind it. me. Because, like, they're gonna watch Bright slowly turn into a pretzel while punching them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not sure why I laughed. Yeah, it's also why I can have my whole arm touch all around my back. Just one arm. Oh, that's useful. Yeah, it is. It can be useful. But, uh... But, oh yeah, and Bright, uh... Here's a suggestion mm -hmm. I can give because this is what my doctor suggested I look into, and it really has helped like my symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, look into finding a dietary supplement that's called Metamucil. It's like a fiber supplement that uh, tends to help uh, lower digestion a lot. Ah. So like you could try taking that, take it as recommended, and see if that helps at all. Might do nothing, yeah. but could look into it. Yeah, there's actually another thing that my stomach does. Like, if I eat something that I really sh If I eat a little bit too much of something, like grains or something like that, uh, I can actually burp a little bit of vomit, like stomach acid. Not vomit, stomach acid. And trust me, that shit burns the fuck out of your throat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, God, that just... Uh, there's there's a section in the latest Quentin reviews video that just taught that's that's like just talks all about uh the intricacies of him having uh eaten tainted chicken. Mm -hmm. And oh boy, that's that's a trip. Yeah, stomach it's acid very funny hurts. Story, yeah, yeah, it's a very funny story, but he mentions like. That was the day that I learned <laughs> that even when you're out of stuff to vomit in your stomach, you can keep vomiting. Mm -hmm. And it's way worse that way. Yeah. <laughs> it, but anyway. Best way I can tell you, it feels like liquid fire. Yeah. Fireball whiskey, but not fun. Yeah. <laughs> I have actually had fireball whiskey. 
Is it a similar sensation? Uh, I had a negative reaction to it. I immediately vomit the shit out of it. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's the same reaction. Like, it's still, it's the same pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh... Yeah. What the... Wait, hold on. That makes me confused. Why is my... Why does my body handle alcohol just fine, except for fireball whiskey? But not food. I don't fucking know you're Irish. <laughs> I, I don't know. It might actually be because you're Irish. Are yeah, you okay like, with yeah. potatoes? Yeah, because I'm fine with potatoes. Irish typically, uh, their traditional breads typically contain potato and not really rely on wheat. I haven't because had... Because wheat were more expensive. I haven't, I haven't eaten too much to potato, so I don't know if I need a whole lot, but... It... But, yeah, I've handled potatoes just fine. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there, like, is some proper, like, mm -hmm. I can't remember where I saw it, but I, I feel like I remember there being some proper genetic, uh, like, research that was done that shows that people with Irish ancestry have some genetic markers that makes them tolerate alcohol better. Oh, yeah, that's the thing, uh, Bookworm, yeah, I did drink it on stream, but I, I muted myself because I vomited on stream. I didn't say that, but that happened. <laughs> so you just fucking vomited into a bottle next to you and just kept streaming. Yeah. <laughs> like anyway, that's yeah. normal. I'm never having another fireball whiskey. Jesus. Yeah, then it's both summer. So so then it's both a hot drink coming back up alongside the stomach. Mm. Yeah, not fun. Tasty. <laughs> Anyways, Danger Noodles, I hope you enjoy learning this stuff about how fucked up my body is. Anyways, see you later for your next mission, and, um, uh... Bottles of cat urine. Uh, silver cucumber anus. <laughs>